find my harem. Okay, we're live. Hey guys, welcome to the stream. How's everyone doing? So, pretty soon after the previous stream, but I went to bed and woke up kind of really early, and I was like, I could live stream. I didn't really want to end the previous one. I was just tired. Anyway, I've slept. Here I am. Yeah, I didn't think I'd be back until the day after tomorrow, but... You know, I just really wanted to come back, which is unusual. So, here we go. Unexpected. Alright, so this is a disaster campaign. We <laughs> we're turn 31, and I have just been trying to get out of my start position for ages. Like, the amount of enemies that keep coming at me has been very difficult to deal with. Um, from a strategic point of view, from a tactical point of view, we can beat them, but they're just coming at us from all over. And because it's so difficult to defend our settlements, it's, that's tough. At least we've... We actually have lost a battle at the Wizard Caliph's Palace before. That has happened. Uh, but it didn't really matter that much. It knocked us down to tier 1 early on in the campaign. Um... So we just got to figure out how to go about actually expanding out. I actually thought this would be a good start position because we start off kind of in an edge, but it's actually been kind of tough. Thalusa did a two dollar super chat. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Um, one thing that will definitely help though is oh, they got this back. Is defeating Mara Pants more often because I think I've defeated her four times at the moment which means I've gotten 20% research rate that's the most important thing. the amount of territory I have is not that big of a deal okay. one thing that I'm doing now as well is starting to build defenses in my settlements because in my minor settlements that is because we're just getting attacked so often and I need to at least stand a chance and without that we don't uh, Jared Boone did a 5 dollars super chat funny how your mood seems to improve when you aren't affiliated with CA mm. I think that's a false equivalency or uh, just a correlation. I'm actually pretty saddened by the situation with Creative Assembly. It actually makes me really sad. Because um, I I really wanted it to work. I, I stayed in the partner program for over a year longer than I really should have. Um, the whole thing makes me really sad that it didn't work out. Um, I think the reason why I'm here more often is not because of Creative Assembly, but because of you guys. Like, if I, if I had posted that I wasn't in the partner program and everyone was like, Oh, you deserve it. So fuck you, legend. You're too negative. Um, I wouldn't have come onto live streaming at all. But one of the reasons that I stopped live streaming full time was that people were just so, like, sh not shitty. Um, what's the way to put it? Agitated all the time. It sort of brought me down. I'm not blaming you for that. There was, you had every right to do it. It just, I didn't enjoy live streaming anymore. You know, when we were doing it during Warhammer 2, everyone was so upbeat and happy and it improved my mood. Uh, obviously, two entirely different um, moods with the community, but... It's just, uh, yeah, it's just, it, it's, uh... I see where you're coming from, but, um... I don't think that's quite correct. But yeah, appreciate the super chat. Okay, so we've got an enemy coming in here. The garrison here should be able to deal with it. But I don't really want to take any chances. So what I want is for this guy here... Do not mistake me for the fool. Um, Arkhan's army is okay. At least it's got a lot of experience. Arkhan's army is okay. Because I just, I just don't know how many armies are like out here. Because we want to recapture Vulture Mountain again. <laughs> but I also want to take the fight to Rapunz. But it just seems like the vampires just keep sending army after army at us. So I need to send this guy we never tire. yeah that's weird um this guy needs to come down here to try to defend this with, with this amount of force here we should be okay and this guy needs to come over here and i won't be able to get at this guy just just recapture vulture mountain again it's a good strategic position because at least it's a walled settlement um i think that Order resolving this is a mistake, given that there could be another army out here. I've seen Manfred around here recently, and his army is not terrible. So, we need to be in a position that we can handle it. 
Chariots fine here because they lack missile units, so all of our guys on chariots. Alright, we just need to fight this manually. Daragesh 890 did $2 in chat. Oh look, Total War Pharaoh. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I get how people could think that, but that wasn't the reason I, I played this campaign. Noob Star Damis became a new member. Thanks, dude. Appreciate the support. Just had a sip of Ickit's second wind serum. Hmm, I guess so. Since this is a disaster campaign, does that mean you don't need to be at war with anyone anymore? No, no, we're still keeping the theme of it. Still going to declare war on everyone. You can have a this is total war campaign and it still be a disaster. Miss the first part. How to become a disaster campaign? Just, it's a this is total war campaign and I just haven't broke out of the funk yet. So, our armies have never been defeated on the field, but I just can't seem to hold on to territory. Because I've only got three armies, which is not enough, obviously. Uh, I don't think I need to use this unit. I'm going to put it there. These, um, they, they stalk, so I'm going to put them over there. This stalks as well, so I'm just going to put that over there. And these start here, and then run over this way. Yeah, we're in the blind spot there, that's good. Damn it, Mr. Saber79 with a $100 super chat. I got to go to bed, so I'll catch the VOD later, but have a great stream. Happy you're feeling in a good mood today. Thank you so much, dude. That's so generous. I don't... I, I really do appreciate all like the hundred dollar super chats, but I just don't get it. I don't feel like my live streams are worth a hundred dollars, but I, I greatly appreciate it. They shall perish. Cameron Spitznagel did a five dollar super chat. Love to see you playing Arkan. To settle a bet, would you agree his campaign is harder in three than it was in two? I certainly think so. No, it definitely is not. No. I mean, if you're doing a This is Total War campaign, it might seem that way. Arkans campaign in Warhammer 3 is way easier than Warhammer 2. Way, way, way easier. There are... I can't think of a single example, except for maybe Carl Franz, and yeah, just Carl Franz, that actually has a more difficult campaign in Warhammer 3 than 2. It's the only situation that I can think of that's more difficult. So... Sorry, sorry to make you lose the bet, I guess. But no, I definitely don't agree that his campaign is easier in, in uh, 2. Artillery can't shoot properly. Ah, that's fine. Doesn't matter. I wasn't counting on it. I'm just going to go cap the town point. I took a little bit of damage getting here. Who's the best Tomb King faction? Well, depends on the criteria that you use to judge it, but... I would say in the early campaign, it would be Cetra. His start position is the strongest. In the late stages of the campaign, it's actually Katep. Because Katep is able to obtain more armies by 25% than anyone else because of his reduced uh, mortuary cult cost. So that reduced cost by 25% accounts for several more armies. Because I think Cetra can only get 21 armies, maximum. Which is not a hell of a lot. I mean, they're all free upkeep, but the Beastman can get 30. But I think Katep is able to get like 25. Again, depends on the, on the criteria that you use to judge them. But I would say, without a doubt, the weakest Tomb King faction is definitely Kalida. Like, she's got no redeeming qualities. She's got no global bonuses. She's a good fighter and everything, but so is everyone else. I don't know if I should have bothered capping that. 
I mean, you can make an argument for any of the other three Tomb Kings. The only one who is definitely not the strongest is is Kalido. She's def definitely 100% the weakest. She got the weakest start position. She got the worst faction bonuses. Um, yeah. Uh, Dr Dreisven Ish did a five euro super chat. I remember your Skarsnik Worm 2 stream very fondly. Mm. That was a long time ago, though. Yeah, that was a, that was a really that was a, this is Total War campaign of Skarsnik, where I stayed in Bretonia for a little while, but eventually just gave up because I just couldn't hold anything. That was that was very similar to this sort of situation. Although that one was tougher because I I stayed there for like fifty turns before um, I was like, oh fuck, I just I just couldn't gain any ground. And then we finally we went back to Karakate Peaks and I finally started to gain ground. Because I had the edge of the map, and also I didn't have the bloody order tide coming at me just endlessly. That was a really tough campaign. I think I would have done better if I had started that today. Because I was... I was building doom stacks, and that's not really the best way to play Skarsnik. You want to be getting nasty skulkers. Nasty skulkers are just... the bomb. Really cost effective unit. Which company do you think is greediest? EA, Blizzard, or Ubisoft? Oh, okay. I wouldn't say Ubisoft. Um, like they're they're greedy. I don't have a hate burner for Ubisoft. I, I really don't. Uh, Ubisoft has made some of my favorite games, and I just I don't see that level of greed with them. Um, I don't know. You, you're gonna have to point with, when it comes to Ubisoft. You're really gonna have to point to a game that I probably haven't ever played in terms of seeing the greed. Because like, when I think of Ubisoft, I think of like. Um, the like Assassin's Creed games, which I don't have a problem with them at all. And Anno eighteen hundred is is um, Ubisoft, and I love that game. But again, you're gonna have to point to a game that um, that I haven't played. As for Blizzard, oh my god, the level of greed of Blizzard is absolutely insane. And as for EA, EA is so far beyond redemption that I don't even pay attention to EA anymore. Um, I would say that EA is as greedy as Blizzard, but their level of competency is absolutely zero. At least Blizzard makes good games. EA doesn't make good games, and their their products are essentially fucking scams. So EA needs to be taken out the back and shot. It's it's irredeemable company. Like it's just. It's just a dead horse. Take it out the back and shoot it. Put it out of its fucking misery. Wasn't that Warhammer 1? No, it wouldn't have been Warhammer 1 because I wasn't live streaming during Warhammer 1. Did I play Diablo 4? I was thinking about Diablo 4. I was looking at it and going, I want to see what happens over the next few weeks. And Blizzard once again proves that it's scumbag fuckery. And I was like, no, I am not supporting a company like Blizzard. So, Blizzard's scum... You, look, there is right now a lot of scumbaggery within the games company. And Creative Assembly is attempting a lot of it as well. It's hard to, it's hard to stay in total war, given what they're doing. Um, but I used to be the biggest... Not the biggest, but I used to be a big Blizzard simp. I used to look at Blizzard and say, wow, they can't do anything wrong. But that was up until about StarCraft 2. Like, after StarCraft 2. Because I... StarCraft 2, Heart of the Void, Legacy of the Void. That was the last time I purchased a Blizzard game. Because I was such a huge fan of Diablo 1 and 2, and StarCraft, and WarCraft 3. I played a little bit of World of WarCraft, it wasn't really my cup of tea. But I enjoyed the game for the time that I played it. Um, never played Overwatch ever. Wasn't my style of game. But after I, you know, kept an eye on Blizzard and saw how that what they evolved into, and I was like, I, I don't think I've ever seen a company fall that far from grace. I just think it's almost irredeemable. But they do make good games. Diablo Four seems, for the most part, fun. But I just can't support what they do with it. The level of greed is just insane. Is there any large game companies that hasn't gone to hell? Um, 
it's it's definitely it's, it's definitely becoming more common. It's it's a it's become mo much more predatory. Um. Hmm. I don't, I don't think it's I don't think there are no companies that haven't gone to hell. There's definitely some that are worse than others. Smaller smaller companies tend to be better behaved. You it is really it the Batman saying you you either die a hero or you live long enough to become the villain. I hate that that fucking is true. Um Larian. Larian right now is the shining star, but if they ever get bought out, then it's probably over for them. But right now they are doing quite well, so hopefully they don't ever get bought out. Paradox seems to be relatively fine. Mm, Paradox pretty scummy. Yeah, they're not. I don't. I don't know enough about Paradox to really judge them, but I would say that in terms of scumbaggery, they're. Maybe on a similar level to Creative Assembly. Uh, Creative Assembly. Similar level. But it depends on which game. Because I think they're a much bigger company. Um, Louis Bradley did a $10 super chat. Hey, Legend. Been playing Total War since I was a fetus on a keyboard. And never thought about giving you money. But after seeing how far Total War has gone and how they wasted your time, you deserve it. Good luck. Uh, thanks, dude. I, I appreciate that. That's not your responsibility to pay me money for, waste, for Creative Assembly wasting my time. <laughs> It is not your responsibility at all. Costs are up. You need to pay me more money. Or else the live streams will die. <laughs> oh, could you imagine if I made a statement like that? Uh, I don't think anyone would have tolerated it. Alright, you come back over here. Oh, I really want to smash reparts on and off the battlefield. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we'll see how we go. So we split up our armies again. How about you scout ahead so I get an idea of what's going on. Oh, but I need your replenishment rate bonus, so... Mm. Okay, here's what I can do. Here's what I can do. How about we get rid of these two guys. Get rid of this one. And this one here. And I think I've got another one that's available. Yeah, there's a fleet-footed one here. That's definitely my preferred trade ever since Knowledgeable went to hell. Because 20% extra speed is really helpful to stay ahead of um, cavalry that's chasing after you. Plus Strider, which is really handy. And we'll get another one here, but this is just as a scout. Yeah, I'm not going to keep it. But this one over here, I, I think I will keep. I'm going to put it into that army. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the Lord of Hekara, but it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not amazing. It's not bad, though. Yeah, it's, it's far from my favorite by a long shot. I really would prefer Shadow Magic. Shadow Magic is great, but I don't see myself getting that Book of Nagash anytime soon. Let me see where it is. So, it is... Yeah, it's other way in Lustria. Hmm. Mm, it's, it's essentially not too far. Hmm. I could send an expedition over there at some point, maybe. I need more armies, though. Last thing I want to do is have a fragmented empire. I mean, the odd army that Luther Harkon sends over is not that big of a deal. Alright, what are we building here? Uh, let's get the money building. I don't think it's worth upgrading that. It's too expensive for one additional unit. The value's just not there. Probably won't make enough of a difference. Okay. Uh, we need to check to see if we're at war with everyone. Because it's still this sort of war campaign. Yeah. 
careful what you wish for. That's interesting. I thought that she was going to lose that. And she just did. Okay. Alright. I, I knew it! I knew Manfred was in the area. I knew it. And they had two armies and he backed off from us. This is what I've been seeing in this campaign a lot, is that the AI shows up, and then they see my army, and then they just run away. Lore of Nehekara is great for some healing when the battle is over, just spam some cheap spells. Yeah, that's what I think as well. Um, and it's got some okay debuff spells. Lore of Death isn't... It's, it's better than it used to... Oh, there, there we go. Pirates of Sartosa are gone. Honestly, good riddance. I don't like Aranessa. Her defeat trade is practically useless. Alright, well, there's probably two armies out that way, so that's something. This... Hmm. We're three turns away from another dynasty. I think I made a boo-boo, guys. Um, I need to go to the toilet. <laughs> I should have gone to the toilet before I went on, but I didn't realize I needed to. My stomach's, like, going, Oh, do you need to go? Alright, um... There's two armies up this way. I don't think Arkhan's going to be able to deal with that. Mm, too much up that way. I tell you what we can do. We can send Arkhan up back up here. Because uh, they're going to come back down. It's going to be constantly recapturing that. But fighting against the Bretonians would be more fun. Because we can get Rapunzel's defeat trait. Um, okay, I have got to go to the toilet. I'll be right back, guys.
Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Just, yeah, sometimes you can't control these things. Okay, uh, Kush Jindal, did I miss any anyway? Let me, let me just have a look. No, all good. Uh, Kush Jindal did a 40 rupee super chat. Sir, you were the chat of Total War, love from India. No worries, dude. Thank you for that, and love back from Australia. Okay, so we were going... I did, I'm trying to decide which way to go. Because our armies are split up at the moment, and we need to concentrate attacks somewhere. Wherever we concentrate attacks, the other areas are going to fall. Vulture Mountain is not an important territory for us. If we go up this way, I expect that we'll be seeing green skins pretty soon as well. There's Rapants. There's Enry. Yeah. Oh, they're, okay. Well, okay. Those two are at war with each other, so we could just let them fight it out for a bit. Yeah. Just for a bit. It doesn't seem like they're focusing on coming down this way. And if they did, I wouldn't be able to do much about it. If I put this one in Force March, wouldn't get very far. Alright, let's have a look with Arkan. I'm leaning towards Manfred at the moment. Yeah, so what they want to do is they want to get me to attack Eye of the Panther. And then they want to strike it. They're setting up a trap for us. I'm not going to be baited. I'm going to be the baiter. <laughs> so I'm going to go into ambush stance here. And try to lure Manfred back over here so that I can kill him. We always want to be on the attack. Alright, I do want to attach this into an army, but I kind of need a scout right now, so... Alright, I just need to get an idea of what's in that army. It's nothing spectacular. Uh, there's an okay chance that this army can overcome that, if we recover. If we recover this, there's a, there's a decent chance we could beat that. Alright, but I want to try to lure it over here, so I'm going to go into Ambush Dance right here. And try to lure it in. If I go into the settlement, this will keep running away. And this guy as well. Come over here, go into ambush stance, so that Manfred doesn't know what we're doing. Of course, there's always a chance he's going to swing around over this way. Uh, Infamo did a five dollar super chat. Um, have you noticed a recent increase in criticism in the last ten minutes alone? I've seen dozens of people saying you've gone to shit. <laughs> Took me a second. That's a good. That's a good. Good joke. Thanks for the super chat, dude. That's a good joke. Because at first I was like, no, I'm not getting criticized much at all these days, and I was like, oh yeah, you're right. I did go to shit. <laughs> all right, we definitely want to get some better quality of units. You know, getting to turn thirty-ish. Well, yeah, some higher quality of units will definitely make a big difference. All right. Good joke, good joke. Alright, let's upgrade this one. Actually, I think I might have something that can make it a bit cheaper. Skill to labor, that'd be good. Yeah, good joke. That's actually that's actually a really good one. We've had some real stinkers lately. <laughs> okay. Hey Anton B Gaming, how's it going, dude? Will you be getting blacklisted affect your income? No. No. Look, being in the partner program was never about making more money. Um, and I would say that they really didn't do anything. Like, my income didn't go up joining the partner program. It really didn't. Do not be frightened. It's, it's um... Normally I would accept that. You got it. Okay, hang on. You got to consider it from this point of view. Good, good. He's fallen for the trap. You got to consider it from this point of view. Um, they wasted a shitload of my time. Time is money. 
T time is the most precious resource that you've got. Creative Assembly lied about the nature of what the partner program was going to be. Shouldn't even be called the partner program, really. Um, that's a deceptive term, term for it. They lied about the nature of the partner program and wasted a colossal amount of my time. Now that I don't have to waste that time with them, I can spend that time doing other things. Now, the amount of time that I'm going to spend trying to make money is very minimal. Um, but at least I'll have more time for other things. I just don't have to waste my time, energy, and resources on a... on a really unworthy cause. So, my income, will, I do not think it will go down. Do not think it will. Because um, it didn't go up in the partner program. But I will have more time, which is more important. So, in many ways, my quality of life will improve. <laughs> uh, this is, you know... Exanthia became a new member. Thanks, dude. I appreciate that support. Why are you playing low detail? Uh, well, when I play on higher details, what ends up happening is the frame rate goes to shit. So I'm going to be buying a new computer soon. And then I'll put the, the quality back up. Typically speaking, people aren't really here, it, not entirely, to watch me play a very cinematic game. <laughs> it is a cinematic game, but that's not why people are here. Usually it's... um. You know, my charming personality. I oh, know. Alright, so we want to take on Manfred. Two armies versus two armies, but our armies are actually better than his. Except for the heroes. Heroes is a little bit of a concern. Such a thing is impossible. Yeah, this should be fine. I, I doubt I'll be able to auto resolve it, but let's let's just see. Reese X one five one did a five dollar super chat. Any tips for the ultimate victory achievement? I don't think I've got it because I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've bothered with it, so I, I can't do any of tips. I haven't done it. Thanks for super chat. Rocky Balboa did a ten dollar super chat. New computer fund. Don't worry, guys. I don't need more money for it. I just need payday, which is happening. It should actually happen today. Well, decisive victory. I wasn't expecting that. But if I fight this manually, what can we expect from Manfred? He doesn't have any area of effect attacks, as far as I can see. He doesn't have any mortis engines. Most of his units are just zombies. They're not going to matter at all. I think we can get a better result than this. It doesn't look like any of our units will get wiped out, but I think we should still fight this manually. Have you played Necromancer Sienna in Vermintide 2 already? No, I haven't really been interested in going back to Vermintide. I sort of, I feel like I've just played it just enough that I got all my enjoyment out of it. Um, You needed someone to call me fucker every day. I stopped doing that though. Had to be more family friendly. <laughs> no, it didn't suit the brand anymore. You know, when I was when I was super edgy, it was it fit the brand. It just doesn't do that anymore. All right, uh, bring that over here. I don't think they're gonna rush at us. Alexander Yo Johansson did a 100 NOK super chat. Legend, have you ever heard of Dixon Cider? The best apple cider there is. I love... Dixon Cider. Have you ever heard of Dixon Cider? Dix inside her. I feel like it's a, it's a spoof super chat. Thanks for super chat, but I, I don't really get it.
it's an okay attempt. I can't say that's my favourite one. But, uh, good attempt. Alright. If I go and Spirit Leech Manfred... Well, what other spells could I use? I got Light Magic. Spirit Leech me, but I can heal for free. Wait, can you heal for free? Yes, you can. Wait, no, that doesn't activate just yet. Exanthia did a $20 super chat. I'm so glad you started streaming again. I'm glad you seem to be in a better mood. Sorry, better MySpace for it. I watch every vid you make. I miss the edge a bit. I'll always be a fucker at heart. Never change, bro. Alright, no worries, dude. Thank you for the super chat. Um, yeah, the, look, the edge just ran its course with me. That's all. I've also got Fireball. That's the best thing to use. I think they're lacking in speed. We got Hex Rays, they don't. You know what's funny? This reminds me of a part in the, um, no, 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 there's like a chapter in, I think it might actually be the first chapter, in one of the End Times books, where Arkan and, and, um, Manfred, like, have a magic fight together. Not together, but against each other. Okay, um, ye Black Knights, they should be fine against, but they're much rather than fight Spearmen, so just back over here. Uh, maybe don't shoot. I don't think we need to. Bring these guys over here. No, hang on, hang on. More important, get rid of the fell bats first. Well, I think uh, Manfred made a bit of a boo-boo here. I'm just going to keep these guys here. <laughs> oh, why did I send my lord to go and fight? By himself. That's just like a petty spirit leech. Oh, I'm going to lose a spirit, spirit leech. Well, that's a good start. First casualty is Manfred. And I can't think of a bigger fuckhead to go down. Nobody likes Manfred. Just waiting for good shots to be made. We're, we're definitely far enough back this time that we should be able to manage it. Alright, we've got Kevin Von Lloydstein coming in. That was pretty bad timing to reform there. Oh, uh, no, they didn't really go into it. Legend 
this shit thing's not shooting? Yeah, I know. Waiting for the right opportunities. Closer they get, the more accurate we'll become. Alright, we can also turn these on fire at will now, I think. Actually, no, don't go on fire at will. I'll just target specific units. Zombies, probably not worth shooting at. I reckon shoot into here. Alright, these guys here, yeah, just go and take out the zombies. And, yeah, we got. A, I think we got some good bombing going on here. Maybe a little bit of friendly fire, but the quality is on their side here. Very minimal friendly fire, if any at all. Okay, I don't I don't actually think they need to be shooting there then. Maybe shoot over here instead. Um Epilip sorry, Epilyptic Bro did a ten dollar super chat. Hey Legend, sorry if this question has been repeated already. Do you think that we could bully you into playing more SFO campaigns? I thoroughly enjoyed watching you turn the world into mulch with Scarbrand. Um uh, I think there's a good possibility of it, yeah. Now, I did enjoy the SFO campaign, it performed well, so yeah, there's, there's a good chance. These two have stopped shooting. Okay, switch around. This is a bigger blob. You guys go into there. You two, four, switch around, shoot into here. We're kicking their ass. Yeah, they're getting absolutely slaughtered out here. That just reminds me, Manfred, uh, not Manfred, Arkan is able to regenerate units, isn't he? Because he has the um, Curse of Undeath. Hmm. So I got some units over here that are a little bit damaged, I could maybe re help revive. A little bit of friendly fire there, but higher quality units, so it's fine. Arkin the Black. Power of Nagash. What are those necromancers doing? Uh, I think they're in a bit of a loop where they're not sure what to do. The AI is programmed to do something, right? They don't want to send them into melee because they're spellcasters, but they don't want to. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> they don't want to get shot, but I wasn't going to shoot them anyway. Alright, move back. With some of these units. Definitely getting a little bit of friendly fire there. More damage to them than to us, though. Don't want to lose experienced units. So they've been trying to heal Kevin. My order's inactive. Okay. Maybe bomb over here. We'll, we'll get less friendly fire because it's just the uh, the single entities out here for the most part. 
Because, yeah, look, we're bombing our own hex wraiths. That's not good. Bring them back. Right, might be better to shoot all the way up here. Just that way we're not going to get any friendly fire. What, my king? Cetra shall pay. Shyish winds gather. Is skilling early or mid red line worth it for crap stacks like zombies or skeletons with vampire counts? Uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with doing that. There we go, army lost them. Honestly, I feel like with the vampire counts, crap stacking is still the way to go as opposed to doom stacking. You definitely can't, you can go either way. But there's there's nothing wrong with uh, skeleton spamming in Warhammer 3. It's just not as cheap as it was in Warhammer 2. Uh, Muffin's Man's Hero did a $20 super chat. Smiley face. Alright, thanks dude. Thanks for super chat. Appreciate it. All right, well that's good. Getting rid of Manfred. And a whole bunch of necromancers so they don't regenerate, that's good. So, you know, they don't, they don't get to get, get high level because they can be quite dangerous at high level. Alexandra Lisov, how are you? I'm quite well, thanks. How are you? Okay, so let's... Yeah, we wouldn't have completely wiped out this army because it was standing outside the city. We'll occupy this because we didn't take much damage. Good, not that many units revived, and none of their characters did. Uh, it would be a mistake to push forward and try to get to Martek. Not that I could anyway, but it would be a big mistake. I think I should put this guy here in ambush stance. Yeah. Maybe we can lure an army over here into a trap, maybe. Okay, but we're in pretty good shape, and we got to level up for him. Unfortunately, the trait that we got from Manfred, Moonslaker, is a bit on the shit side. <laughs> we're already immune to vampiric attrition, so... Uh, I can't, I really wish there was a button I could just click to go delete on uh, that particular trait. That'd be so good. Or, you know, I wish they would increase the cap on it. But, you know, that's abusive gameplay. Leadership plus four for the army is definitely good. All right, let's do that one. Just cooking, watching the stream? Sounds good. All right, so... That's useful. Yeah, we gotta get down the red line. Uh, okay. Birona's time warp's pretty good. No, I'll go with banishment. It's, it's usually better to go damage dealing spells. Okay. Well, it doesn't seem like they're coming over here.
Hmm. This army here, striking here with those 11 additional units, they probably would really struggle with it. You gotta be very careful with these garbage armies. Alright, let's upgrade that. Actually, I've got a Charnel Valley Necrotect I can put on him. Which will reduce those construction costs a little bit. Yep. 30%. That's good. Sorcerer's Island. I'm going to assume this time I'm going to hold on to it because I'm building defenses, so... Extra growth and a bit of extra money. Not so bad. Hmm. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just sit in the settlement for another turn. And just replenish. Because, yeah, he just needs to recover a little bit. Another thing I could do, let's get rid of... No, no, just keep it for now. Just want to keep this guy keeping an eye out of here. Don't bother the damage buildings. Yeah, just keep him scouting. I'll just keep an eye on that. Okay. Also got to keep in mind that damn rogue faction is still out there. And so far hasn't recovered much. That's good, because those guys were a pain in the ass. Nobody else is going to fight them, but they are slippery as fuck. Really annoying what they do. Okay. Don't know why I'm looking that for. Any new enemies? Nope. Pottery will give you access to a healing item. Ah, uh, that doesn't really matter. I'll get the pottery later. The, the item... Nah, I'm saving up for a new army. That's more important. We can get healing through our skill tree. Alright, let's move on. Legend, what race should I do for my next Immortal Empire campaign? Uh, I could always give Scarbrand a go, I guess. I don't know. Why not upgrade the palace? It is upgrading. I just didn't upgrade the defenses because it's expensive and doesn't really provide much value. Yeah, I figured they would come back to Lashiac at some point. We're very close to getting a new army. It'll make it a lot easier to defend these sort of positions. Alright, that's a bit of a concern, for sure. Hmm. That is a concern. Well, this guy got pulled out of ambush stance. That's been happening to me a lot in this campaign. Uh, says it's a bad affair fight. Hmm. I wonder if I should give it a go. Because they've definitely got some better units. But they've also got units that are going to do absolutely nothing. They have access to healing. They don't have that much magic. I don't have, really have any magic unless I attach this guy. Yes, see it is done. Does this guy here? Okay, since we've got resurrect, that gives us a lot more, a lot more fighting power. Okay. All right. I th what, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stand out here. I'm going to disband this unit. I'd much rather keep my experienced troops. My will and I'm gonna oh, shit. My dynasty. 
I didn't realize he couldn't make it. Hang on, that's right at the edge of his movement, so... If he attacks us, which... Uh, given the cowardly nature of the AI, I don't think he will. I could always back off if I don't feel up to it. Yeah, I should have... Uh, that was silly. Oh, well. Losing one unit shouldn't make that big of a difference, but since we rely so heavily on these two... Yeah. So, Lashiek is not that big of a deal if we lose it, which it looks like it's guaranteed. I just can't get it before. So, next turn we get another army, and we're getting really close to another army after that. This army here could probably go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it. But that would leave Arkan in a poor position out this way. Just scouting. Oh, here's someone having to prepare war now. Nemis of Cinderbrush, Harukak us binjar anutas. Filas. Oh, those friggin' beastmen are still around as well. Oh wait, wait, I didn't actually declare war on them. You know what? Defeating him. If he, if he uh, drives out the ash and came over here, that would actually be really good. Am I having fun with the campaign? Yeah, absolutely. It's been quite a lot of fun. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, gotta make some tough choices here. I refuse. I suspect ill intent. Hmm. Because if I go and occupy Martek, I I'll probably get hit by Rapance. No. But I could always just sack it. I imagine Lashiek is probably going to get sacked. But this army here could beat, beat that quite easily. Even if they occupy that settlement, should be fine. So yeah, I'm going to bring this guy back around over here. Oh, he won't be able to reach... Oh, he, mm, it's going to be iffy. It's going to be iffy. Because I wanted to take out this army here. Alright. If, if, um, if they take Lashiek, it's fine. Because if they take this army and get to Sorcerer's Island, they're not going to be able to succeed. I'm, I'm assuming I'll be able to hold them back because this, gar this army is garbage. I probably won't be able to beat them there. Plus I'll have a new army. I think trying to hold on to the province is not our best option. We need to keep pushing forward. Because at the end of the day, if we can get another victory over Rapance, not with Arkan obviously, but if we can get another victory over Rapance, we can get our research rate up more than this settlement here was ever going to provide. And that's what's most important right now. Okay, I've got an idea. I want this guy here to launch the attack. Order resolve should be fine. More casualties than I would have taken, but that's fine. We definitely want to occupy it. We're getting pretty close to the amount of canopic jars that we need, so that's good. And then we'll put Ark in the Black in ambush stance. And make sure this guy is not standing inside the settlement. Stand outside of it. And what we might see is Rapance launch an attack over here. And if that happens, we'll be able to beat her. Now, this guy here has already got the defeat trait, I believe. He does, yeah. So we'll need to switch him out. Not in this world or the other. Actually, no, you can stay in there. Is my throne ready? But yeah, kick this guy out. For somebody that doesn't have it. 
Trustworthy is kind of useless here. This, I'm pretty sure that one's already got it. I don't think this one here has it, so let's grab this one. Yeah, this one here doesn't have the trait. Okay. Alright, this will be an iffy end turn. Let's see how this goes. I have the panther that's got this. Let's just get rid of it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That allows us to get, recruit more archers. Maybe I'll leave it. Don't upgrade anything right now. Okay, Lashiak is definitely going to fall. I can't stop that. Unless, of course, they pull... It's unlikely. They, they love sacking settlements. Alright, we'll just have to deal with that. Uh, should we build up this growth building? For an additional 10 growth. Uh, I've got the money. Let's do it. It's fine. I don't think I'm going to lose that settlement. And we've got a new commandment here, which I'll just go with growth. Cool, let's move on. Hey Legend, do you know if they have fixed the Exalted Demonettes for Azazel? I, I don't know about that one, sorry. Yeah, I'm not sure. Have we lost a Legendary Campaign? Nope, never lost a Campaign. Mm, we definitely don't want that guy getting his Immortality. Well, they're going to go for it. Okay, I'm going to back off because I want the hero attached into this army. Oh, that was a pretty long distance of back off. No! Oh, I, I should still be able to launch the attack. Unless he goes into ambush dance. Don't go to, no, he wouldn't be able to. He used up all of his movement. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That way, we'll be on the attack. He'll have lost five winds of magic. We don't lose five winds of magic. Cause, and we get replenishment. Honestly, that's really the best case scenario there. Oh, she's gonna do it. She's gonna do it. She doesn't realize that uh, Arkhan's here to back him up. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh, what the f Good thing we go all spears. <laughs> Alright, so in terms of magic, what are we dealing with here? Life magic. Okay, so gotta watch out for blobs. Uh, oh, what the... Why is Arkan not showing up? Oh, he is there. <laughs> okay, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, put this army here under AI control. No, that's not gonna work, is it? It won't come under AI control. Um... We don't want to wipe out Rapunz, or else we won't get that sweet, 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 sweet ass trait. <laughs> let's just fight it manually. Will you be reclaiming Nagashazar? Doesn't look like it's gonna happen anytime soon. Lost her scroll wheel. Yeah, I don't know. It's knee jerk reaction, whatever. All right. Well, I'm really not worried about this because our army is just all spearmen, and there's all cavalry. We just need to watch out for that life wizard, which I'll get Ark in the Black to sort that out since he he is coming. Is it just me, or does this... This doesn't look... in the right place. This doesn't look like the right map. It looks like we're fighting in Lustrio. I don't know. Does this... Does this look like... the Desert of Araby by any chance? <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. Who cares? Not a big deal. Alright, I need to lose the garrison forces immediately. Because otherwise, all of Arkan's forces aren't going to show up. I'll just put them out front. I need to waste them for nothing. Alright. Just wait for them to bring in their reinforcements. And I reckon we'll double line this. 
Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, we got to be careful about blobbing because of that life wizard. Be surprised how much damage that can do. Uh, this one's speed is 95, so we should be able to outrun cavalry. They're all uh, fleet footed. This is why I wanted to get fleet footed. Looking at their cavalry. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's not worth the risk. I bet there's a pyramid tag for that map, but in typical CA fashion, they didn't distinguish it between Tomb Kings and Lisbon Pyramids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The costs are up, guys. Oh, well. It's not, it's not the worst thing ever to get weird maps. It's not the worst thing. Alright, no, I really do need to sacrifice these guys straight away, not you. Because, yeah, I need my, the rest of my reinforcements can't come in until these ones here die. Should have sacrificed them at the start. Animus. Yeah, with no ability to flank us, there's, there's no hope for them. Easy repart's victory for us. I'm glad I switched the Lord out so that we can actually get the trait. Because if my other Lord had remained for another turn, well, then we wouldn't get it. Is, is this army on force march? Oh, Arkhan's not quite as quick as that wizard. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we could waste their ammo on these, that'd be great. Careful, boy. Arkan. Careful. Alright, I'm probably making a boo-boo here. I'm trying to snipe this one because it's the only thing that causes serious damage to us. I could overcast it, but I really don't want to. But, there we go. Overcasting spells. Yeah, I can need to move. The casual did a five euro super chat. How goes the conquering? Well, it's. <laughs> I wouldn't say we've been conquering. It's, uh, it's, you know, the campaign's okay. It is a bit of a disaster. But it's okay. You know, it's, this is a Total War campaign, so naturally, there is going to be challenges. It's only Knights Errant, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, we don't want to use Fireball right now, because you got to turn around to use it. Okay, now might be an okay chance to use it. Unfortunately, against Cavalry, it's really bad, but there's only Cavalry, so what else can I use it against? My troops are in now. Honestly, my garrison didn't do half bad against those mounted yeomen. Three kills. Yeah, well, the fire, like I said, the fireball is not good against cavalry, and they've got no infantry, so what am I supposed to do? Guard mode? Yeah, alright. Shouldn't really matter in this situation, but. Yeah, just have them fire at will. Just 
See, this is one of the reasons why I don't like overcasting the spell, is that the amount of time it takes to, to the, with the cooldown is a bit of a problem. We don't want to get any friendly fire if we can avoid it. Try and Kettering campaign three times after the Shadows have changed. Every time Castalton gets wiped before turn 25, they broke something with the DLC. Any suggestions? Um, I don't know, sorry. I haven't played a Kettering campaign recently. She's definitely one of my favorite campaigns to play, but I haven't played her recently since Shadows of Change. Um... If Castalton gets wiped out, then the only thing that you can really do is try to revive him. He can be revived at Erengrad, so... Um, I haven't seen that happen, but I don't disbelieve you. I, I imagine that it would happen. Um, maybe they tone down his aggressiveness. I don't know. I just don't know. Uh, Enry's getting very close to getting his Hippogriff mount. Onwards, minions! Close. Hang on, hang on. Can I get close? No, 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 no. Can't get close. The last thing I want to do is get pinned down. There we go. Now, still, that life wizard is a problem. Because they're, they're going to have at least some winds of magic. Heal our guys a little bit with this, which is nice. Uh, careful where we're shooting. Careful. We really don't want to get friendly fire. I don't think Banishment is the right call here. Hopefully this one here keeps focusing on healing rather than damaging me. Because she would actually do more damage to us that way. Uh, the trees over there are going to be a problem. Shoot over here. Shoot at, th shoot at their archers. Right, we're, we're taking a bit of damage. Careful. This one's taking too much damage, let's move it into the rear and bring another unit up instead. Bring in the reserves. This one here is taking too much damage, let's bring it back, bring in some reserves. Not gonna lie, they're doing a bit more damage to us than I expected. They are doing a bit more than I expected. You move back. You do not want to be fighting Enri. You, oh, you got Tormentor sorted again. Come on. Both of you get back. You don't want to be fighting Enri. He's anti-large. Um, Akane did a 25 PLN super chat. Maybe Ubisoft will make Heroes 3 like game with battles like in Total War now. There is an open market for that type of game. I doubt it, but I wouldn't be opposed to it at all, for sure. Thanks for the super chat. Appreciate it. Right, bring these guys closer to Arkin so they can actually get healed. Alright, 
Alright, I need you guys to be shooting more over here. Okay, this one's taking a bit too much damage. Move it back. Send in some more reserves over there. It's good they don't seem to be using their magic too much. It's counting on that. Watch. Oh. The problem is with them constantly cycle charging, and they're trying to predict where where to uh, use the artillery. They hit our own units sometimes. That's why you got to be careful with them. This one here is getting shot a bit. Let's move it back. Good, getting our single entity some healing. Now remember, we don't want to kill her apart, we just want to get her off the battlefield. Because we want to fight her again. She used up pretty much all of her movement getting here, so we'll be able to fight her again, which will be it. Nice. Gotta get that research rate, I need more armies. Not the best place at all to have the Casket of Souls, but they honestly haven't done too badly. Most of the enemy army is falling to pieces now. We got this. Tim did a 2 euro super chat. Hold the line. Ah, right, you were doing a great job, Legend. Alright, thanks, dude. I appreciate that. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Looks like we inflicted the army losses. Alright, that's great, but I really want to kill this character here if I can manage it. Can we potentially... If you could pin her down, that'd be great. I do not want a high-level life wizard running around. Yeah, we can outrun her. So if we cast some more of these spells, we get a tiny little bit of healing. I'm not sure if it's going to revive anyone, but it's better than nothing. Keep our combined for healing. Um, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to keep casting spells. It's not gonna get much, but I don't know. These guys are gonna run off the battlefield really quickly. It's all cavalry, so anyway, we, we did what we wanted to do there. Well, that's the disaster campaign. Legion can't save the CAs. Uh, it's, it's it's really not as bad as you might think. Like, it's bad right now, don't get me wrong, but I really don't think Total War is in, in serious trouble. Um, it's just... Saga games have always been a problem. So, the release of this latest one, it just, it tarnishes their brand. I don't know why they keep doing it. They're trying to make something work. But, you know, the next major historical Total War game, as long as it is either Medieval 3, Empire 2, or even World War One Total War, I'm sure it'll be f I'm sure it'll be functional. <laughs> it's hard to say if, if a Total War game will be good, but I'm sure it'll be functional. <laughs> Weird, still give them the benefit of the doubt. But yeah, it's good that we didn't take out Rapance. Oh, I should have taken out Re Henry though. Stop him from leveling up. Alright, so let's go with... Yeah, let's go with this, because we need to be able to catch her. I kind of did a 25 PLN super chat. By the way, will you resume Valheim when Ashlands will drop? Uh, it's hard to say. We don't know at this stage. Yeah, I can't win that. 
Paulus Galkin has did a five euro super chat. Bit random and not Warhammer 3, but do you have any tips along the lines of Shogun 2 for dummies? Just recently bought it to try a historical game. Um, okay. Shogun 2 was not my area of expertise. It is a great game, don't get me wrong, but I really didn't sink my teeth into Shogun 2. Um, there are a lot of other really good people out there that are, that are fantastic at Shogun 2. Um, I'll just give you some names if you want to check them out, where you can get some good guides for Shogun 2. Um, there's Mr. Smart Donkey, there's Voland, but I, I know I'm going to get a knee-jerk reaction to that. Um, <laughs> if you, look, if you have a look at Voland's Shogun 2 videos, they're excellent, okay? But um, there are there are quite a lot of other people out there that cover Shogun 2, so it's an area that has already been tapped, and it was not an, an area of expertise that I covered. And I don't need recruitment cost. <laughs> should I take out the convoy or should I take out this one? Do, I, I can't do both. Great, that's going to cause a revolt. Well, this will this will provide me with a little bit of money. But I kind of want to kill it. Now, I'm going to go after the vampire counts because that is strategically more important. Okay, I still think I can win because the Vargais are going to die really quickly. There's no advantage for them here. And that's probably worth a fair bit of balance of power. They don't have anything that can dish out any serious damage. And I got some good mounts. The only units of theirs that'll do any serious damage to us are these three. We're gonna struggle against them. Oh yeah, plus we got healing. Okay, no, we'll be fine. You know that Volan insulted you? Look, it's in the past. You know, and I insulted him. You know, we, we've both hurt each other. You gotta get over these things at some point. What's to do with Voland? I hear legend say that he's controversial. Yeah, look, it's it's a very difficult um, subject to approach because, like, I am doing my best to be a bit of a diplomat within the Total War community, and um, I don't personally have any problem with Voland. Um, and I, you know, I talk to him fairly regularly recently. Um, it's a fairly recent development, and, you know, there's a lot to be gained by talking to him, for sure. But, you know, there are, it's, whenever I talk about him, people say, you shouldn't associate with him. It's, I just, it's, it's a hard one to cover, for sure. But, you know, if you want good, if you want to see a good Shogun 2 video, he's got some. So... I don't know what else to say about that. Yippee kind of yay did, did a ten dollar submission. Hey legend, if you're going to do SFO again, I recommend Grimgore. He's got quite a lot of good stuff in Kingdoms and Wildlands, and he's quite different now. Uh, I'll consider it. Okay, thanks for the chat. So why does Bo Volant have beef with you? I don't think that he does. I don't think that he does. I don't. I don't believe we do have beef. I mean, we, we, we talk pretty, like, once every couple of days now. 
Well, I don't. I don't think we do have beef. But you know, it's up to you guys to decide who you do and don't like as as a YouTuber. I'm not here to tell you um, who you can and can't like. How does your partner cope with you on the computer all the time? Don't you get yelled at? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes and no. Um, it is my job, so she's very happy with with uh, the job that I've got. But I do spend too much time on the computer, for sure. But she's very understanding of it. Alright, I was hoping that they would... Oh, it's Law of Nehekar. Okay, I can maybe make that work. Oh, wait, no. Uh, i got to be careful because I'm on foot. Mm, I just want to watch out from getting flanked, which is why I'm trying to move around over here. I don't have any means of triggering them because we don't have any damage dealing spells except for this one. And Okay, just got to be careful. I can't see how CA could think to make a game based around Bronze Age Egypt with ho shitty chariots work on this engine. Yeah. CA... The management at CA don't... Don't see a problem with the engine because Warhammer 3 sells really well, right? Or Total War Warhammer sells really well. So surely the engine is good. But Warhammer engine is really good for Warhammer. And to be honest, even then it's it's actually not that good. Um, but if you look at a Bronze Age Warfare... This engine can't cope with it. There's no way. You need to massively overhaul it. I mean, it's... Looking at the battle engine for Troy and uh, Pharaoh, it, it absolutely couldn't cope. It was the main reason I stopped playing Troy. The battles were just atrocious. Because, like, imagine if you take Total War Warhammer, right? And you only have melee infantry, archers, and chariots. Except you nerf the shit out of chariots. It would not be a good game. Christopher Colom did a five dollar super chat. What's your thoughts on Blizzard getting bought out by Microsoft, Sega, and CA next? Um, I am okay with it all because it is change, and I would like to see some change. Now, I'd, I've never really had any personal beef with with Microsoft. Never felt like their games were fantastic. I've never been much of an Xbox fan. I've never owned an Xbox. Um, but it could be the shakeup that we need. But then again, the problem with having gigantic companies with like a huge number of studios under their boot, there, there can be problems with that for sure. <coughs> so it's definitely something that we should keep an eye on. Like I can't say for sure, like, yes, this is definitely something that, that should happen or no. It's like, I'm on the fence about it. I just don't know. But any any change, just to shake things up, would be at least interesting. My will be done. They're going ham on those spells for um, in, uh, what's it called? The gaze of Nagash. It's not doing very much damage to us, so I'm going to blob up a little bit, because this guy here has got this ability, so we can really use this to generate more, um... Oh yeah, and we can, while that's active, we can use this to revive our casualties. They're really trying to kill him. But that's an expensive spell, and they're going to run out of magic if they keep that up, and it's not doing much to us. If we have a look at it, it's costing him 7 wins of magic. They've only got 60, so it's... They're wasting it. They need it for heals. Also, blobbing up is really strong against Var guys, because as soon as they land, they're just going to get insta-killed.
Yeah, and it's barely even tickling. The Gaze of Nagash is a terrible spell. It's, it's in my opinion, the worst spell in the lore of, uh, of Undeath. Lore of Vampires. You're playing like Vampire Counts, except no Winds of Death. Yeah, well, it's, uh, we're just playing to our strengths here, and they don't have any means to deal with a blob. <laughs> oh, that one did a bit of damage. They're wasting all of their bloody magic with this. Alright, I need to get them to attack us. No, I don't. I just keep just keep slowly advancing. Imagine if they popped a Wind of Death on you. Yep, that would suck. Luckily, they don't have Wind of Death, otherwise I wouldn't have uh, attempted this. Oh yeah, that's it. And watch how quickly these Vargeists die. Ready? I'm not as blobbed up as I would like. Okay, maybe they're, they're holding out a little bit longer than I thought they would. Because they're regenerating. But they're still not getting much value out of that. Okay, one unit of our guys down. That's good. Yeah, minimal casualties, so that's great. This one here's taking a little bit, because yeah, this grave guard. Move you back in here a little bit. This guy's doing well. Alright, I really need him to be focusing on the Grave Guard. He's really the only one that's gonna actually you're not too bad. Okay, now that their monsters have been killed, we wanna to try to cycle charge through their line here. Using our collision attacks can do absolutely monstrous amounts of damage. To grave Oh what the fuck was that? Fifty percent of the time, it works every time. Yeah, there we go. That's what we want to see. Those collision attacks. Move, slaves. Obey. Move. We march. Go. Hmm. Charge stops a bit early. I just get back in there. We need to set up a heal. And this time, Obey and move. we'll use the Law of Nehekara it is well. to try to revive some casualties. Yeah, it's working, it's working. Look at that, we're reviving casualties. Nice. That's a good combination, though. So Law of Nehekara kind of worked out for us there. Good amount of healing. Like I said, i got to get rid of these Grave Guard. They're the ones doing the most damage to us. Losing frames, let me zoom in there. Slaves. Come now. Look at that, their cavalry are avoiding to go into combat, which makes sense because they're useless in this situation. Oh yeah, that's what I was after. Look at those kills. That's good. Yeah, I quite like the um, Kimmy and War Sphinx charge animation. It's very good. We march for Nehekara. Just slow down a bit. Alright, do a casualty here. Let's move that back. Glad to get a bit of a heal. Bring it back if we can. The 
Good. Brought it back to unlife. Good. This one's taking too much damage. Move back in. And because they've used up all their magic now, like on the stupid spells, they don't have any left for healing. Yeah, what are you doing? Get back over there. Turns out I've got Wind of Death, yeah? Why does that buff spell help with regenerating troops faster? It buffs melee stats, right? It's the spell passive. Whenever I cast a spell, heals per second, raises undead units. It doesn't matter which spell I use. This is about using the passive. And because this is a cheaper spell, obviously that one's the one to use. We get in the center, we need to get ready for another heal. Get ready to kill him as well. There we go. So yeah, it's this one. It's a combination. So this one's providing healing, but not regen. And this one provides regen. Um, sorry, revives entities. I mean, it's a good combination. Jake the Snake, the two dollars super chat. What's your favorite Tomb Kings unit? Probably the Cambrian War Sphinx or the Scorpion. Yeah, those are really good units. Quite enjoy using them. Plenty of magic, and this battle's pretty close to being over. You know, it gets a little bit of healing in without him. Looks like the Grave Guard are okay. No, they're still here. They're just wrapped around a different way. If this keeps up, we might end up with virtually no casualties. <laughs> we even taken a scratch. Look at us. This worked out well, really nicely. I've done it before. Damage, let's move back. Yeah, it's not great against cavalry, guys. Traverse 
slaves. Obey! Move! Come now! Go! Animus! Alright, that looks like the army loss is there. Let's quickly get in the heal before the battle's over. Traverse, slaves! Thirty-seven casualties. I think that worked out pretty well. Seems like the birds are coming out because it's four, five o'clock in the morning. So yeah, the birds will start chirping a little bit. Hundred forty-one kills. Yeah, but it's probably mostly against zombies. All right, let's take that. Good. That worked out really nicely. Is that a cat? It's just, it's just like an outside bird. It's not my bird. It's just a bird that exists. Because I live in a country that has wildlife. You know? It's not my bird. But yeah, I could hear it. If I could hear it, you guys can hear it. Alright. This one here. Oh, it is already immortal. God damn, it's only 30, 10, 35. How'd you get an armor of destiny? That army itself is not a big deal. They're stronger than Volkmar. So this one here would have gotten... Yeah, there it is. End of an Errant. That's what it's all about. We've also got access to a new army, so that's really good. So Proclamation of the First Dynasty will give us Campaign Movement Range, which will, which will be really good in this situation because like, I just can't be everywhere at once. So five grand. I got the money for it. Let's do that. We are getting very close to getting another army. On top of that, so they occupied it. Alright, I'll recruit an army at... La uh, Wizard Kali's Palace. Because we're going to need to have somebody here to deal with the revolt. Hang on. This one here... They're not recruiting. They can't recruit from here. I could globally recruit. If they were to attack there, they've got, they've got 14 units, we've got 12. But it would be a minor settlement battle. And we've also got trashy units. We'll, we'll see. Alright, let's grab you over here. And get you some archers. Get some better units first. How about grab them first. And then... Globally recruit... Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Look, legend, carrion. Uh, yeah. Tomb King. There's still going to be a revolt in two turns. So yeah, the army should be ready by then to be able to handle a revolt. So that's good. Okay, here it would be good if we can go and capture Great Desert of Araby, which we'll be losing again straight away. Okay, it looks like Manfred is out for the count for now. A strategy. They challenge me. It's interesting, Australian, how deadly is the bird? Insanely deadly. Dude, if you go outside, they pluck out your eyes. Insanely deadly. Yeah, we should go with the Kunapa Jars. Greatness comes. Obey. Okay. So this one over here, we need to tag this one out now for another character. Trustworthy is useless to us in this campaign. This is a good trait normally, but useless in this campaign. Let's go with tough. Oh, actually, actually. 
Increasing our chances of stealing and magical item away from her parts. Let me just, hang on, let me just have a look at what she got. I cannot. Mm, I can't steal that. So it wouldn't really provide any value. Not in this world or the other. Yeah, just go with tough then. My dynasty reigns. But if you have a look at our research rate, we are at 75%. So yeah, we're falling behind a little bit. We need to get that research rate up. I know you guys can't see it because my face is blocking it. You are not him. I don't think I need to send Arkan to go over there to, to do this. Because I need Arkan to go and take out this army. And if he comes over here to reinforce, he might run out of movement. It is forbidden. And then he needs to take out al Haik. This is probably order resolve worthy. So let's do that. Your king demands, little fool. Scavenger might be nice versus that Empire Lord. Indeed, yep, indeed. But he's not my priority right now. My priority is putting Rapaz back in her place. Probably should have fought that manually, actually. Have I tried kangaroo meat? Yes, I have. It is not that great. It's okay. Um... It's not great, though. As my lord's design. Moving. Servant of Alright, if I attack this, which I said I was going to, when we win this one, we could take on Canopic Jars. And, no, when we occupy Al Haik, we'll get enough. So I'm just thinking how to go about it. Mm, if I... Hmm. If I order resolve it, this unit here is going to get wiped out, and it's an experienced unit. I can't exactly fill my army with quality units right now, so I need to keep my experienced troops alive. Is what it is. So that would have gotten our research rate up back up to eighty percent, and that, that's good. That's why we've kept Raparts alive. Without her, I think at the moment we are getting thirty percent extra research rate from her defeat trade. So if I had wiped, if I'd never taken her out at all, we'd only be at like 50% research rate, which uh, that would really slow things down. What in your opinion is the weirdest dish from your part that you tried? Like, like or not, it's irrelevant. Curious. Australia doesn't really have any particularly fancy dishes. We, we, yeah, we, we don't, we don't have anything. Like this is, this is Australian food. Barbecues. That's it. Or if there is like a specific Australian dish, I don't—I literally don't even know what it is. Like the the most Australian food I can think of is a meat pie. <laughs> she's still got that friggin' life. Oh no, she's not a life wizard. This one's actually worse though. Flock of Doom. Um, at least they can't heal. Oh fuck, he's on that now. He leveled up. All right, let's go. Let's go slow down. Just curious on how I should handle this. We got to be careful because of the um, the cavalry, so they don't bloody smash our artillery. Take the damage units and try to keep them safe in here. He's going for the wizard. That's okay. I think we can handle him. Hopefully this doesn't hit our own units. 
No, that, that was alright. That was alright, actually. Not too bad. He's going for Arkin. Should be okay. Let's watch our flanks. And we should be fine. out chasing after them. the end of that. Let's wound Henry because we'll get more loot money by doing that. Although he might get away because he's pretty close to the edge of the map. Oh, that shot actually hit. Oh, we might get him. We might get him. Alright. I don't think that's the last time we're going to see him, but at least he's gone for now. Alright, we've got a bit of an opportunity here to do a little bit of healing. Just a bit. So if I cast these spells, get a little bit. Because we got the Curse of Undeath. Don't bother shooting. It's a waste of ammo. Not that it really matters now. See if we can time it with this. Didn't revive anyone, but whatever. Fireball him. Well, the problem with fireball is that you gotta stand still, and it will only do like 20 damage to him, so it, w it wouldn't have been worth it. Anyway, we got him in the end. Hey, Niskimble, how's it going, dude? Is that Henry the Massive? Yes, it is. Well, it was. Take the money. No yeah, we'll get the Canopic Jars when we capture Al Haik. Good. And we didn't lose that unit, so that's also good. Alright, I needed him to force March to reinforce, or else he's not going to get any experience. But this should be an easy win for us. And they brought it back up to tier 3, which means we'll get it at tier 2. And there's that fucking dude again. Holy crap. How many bloody armies is he going to spawn? That's, that does seem to be his only army, though. We also know that Wurzag is trolling the coast around here. Anyway. This one... Yeah, if I can keep an eye on what's going on over here. Oh, yeah, here it is. Freaking multiple armies. Mm. Alright, what are we doing now? 
we need to... If we auto-resolve this... They, it's, a, it's an easy enough fight to f do manually. Just gotta watch out for these two here. Yeah, I just... Eh, I don't like sieges. Isn't it kind of the seventh stack of the rogue army that you smashed? Uh, I think I have killed five of their armies now. So yeah, it would be seven, wouldn't it? But this is what they do. They they spawn a new army that only has the Lord, and then they send their main army to go and fight, dies, and then the other one just waits until it can spawn another army, and it just recruits another full stack and then comes at you. I need to get rid of all of their armies, but the problem is I would have to rush at them. And if I did that, there would be so many other enemies in the area that if I succeeded in killing them, I would probably be so isolated that the entire rest of our empire is falling apart. So it's just not worth it at this stage to do that. We need to take control of this area. We need more armies, which we're going to get. And then we'll be able to cut off their escape routes. But yeah, normally what you would do with those guys, as I said before, is... Uh, you would declare war because their 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 faction doesn't activate until they've been declared war on. They just sit there with their starting army, sit there for bloody forever. So normally, what you would do is declare war on them, and then on that turn, wipe them out, and then they just don't get a chance to recover. Obviously, because they're wiped out. Okay, they've got artillery. Just be careful of that. The artillery is all the way back there. Okay, it's fine. Yep, yeah, just shoot it, whatever. Doesn't matter. Now, we can't get inside until I've spirit leached these away. We've got plenty of magic, so that shouldn't be a problem. I really should be focusing on the Knights of the Realm, though. You guys back off. Uh, yeah, you can come with us, I suppose, because you're on a fast mount. Alright, this guy's on Force March. What's so massive about Henry? Why do you think Rapartz keeps Henry around? He's massive. <laughs> you know. Why do you think Rapartz has a big sword, two-handed sword that she carries? She she likes it. She likes a you know, she likes a sword. <laughs> Guy called Henry Le Massive is five five foot six. Why is he massive? Unsub because of that joke. Fair enough. Yeah, I know this is not the most riveting gameplay, but our armies are too badly damaged. We. we well, some of it is damage. I just don't think an all-out assault is worth it. Especially when we can win this with zero casualties. We've also got Fireball. That might help speed things up a little bit. Getting spirit leech, they just sit there and take it, but as soon as they fireball them, they're like, Oh no, run away! If you can come over here, you might be able to bomb them, help us out a little bit. We could probably go into melee and beat them, but the problem with this is that it'll pin us down and then their anti-large adventure will come in. 
a tree, whatever. Legend, do you prefer Burger King or McDonald's? I don't like McDonald's at all. So, I prefer Burger King. I, I don't really think it's great food either. <laughs> but I, I can't say that I'm a fan of McDonald's. Last few times I've had McDonald's, I've just been like, ugh, just, it just doesn't make me feel good. Like my insides go, man, what the fuck? What the hell are you throwing into me here? That's what it's like eating McDonald's. It's not much better with Burger King, but still. Slightly better. You know, you put trash in your body, it makes you feel like shit. Hmm. Maybe have been a mistake to bring them in because I oh, don't know here they're coming back. Almost got rid of him. Yeah, that's it, that's enough. You've done enough. Come back. Didn't need to open cast that. That was a waste. Alright. Just one more spirit leech should do it. Yeah, I shouldn't have overcast it. Cherries would be able to pull through easily enough, but the horse might struggle. Oh, cool, they're helping us out a little bit with their own artillery. Nice. Okay, pull through, pull through. Okay, here we go. We'll end this in a couple of minutes now. And this will be zero casualties, which is important because I expect there's going to be a lot of counterattacks. Especially with the Cult of Sotek, uh, Soltek, uh, Cult of Sigma. They'll be coming at us pretty soon. Did you know Jamie Oliver sued McDonald's over their description of their product as food? Mmm. <laughs> well, look. You want to argue semantics. It's food. It's just not good food. Like, if you're eating McDonald's, you're not thinking to yourself, man, I'm rewarding my body today. You're just... You put you put trash in your body. Low-quality food. That's why it's cheap. You get what you pay for.
Sad thing is, it isn't that cheap. Well, comparatively cheap. Occupy that. And then, oh wait, am I short on... Oh man, I'm one canopic jar short. <laughs> short? No, that's fine. Uh, let's get it next turn then. Alright, I think it would be better if this army stays in Al Haik, because it needs more uh, replenishment. A bit more. Lord Recruit Wang. Lord Recruit rank is good. Research rate is good. It's got his immortality. I'm not really that fast on getting down here. I just don't rely on their magic that much. I'm going to go with the research rate. It's only 2%, but it's... Oh, I can get more. It's better than nothing. I could have sworn I would have... Um, been at 800. <laughs> Must have just read it wrong. Infamous to fight the super jet. Total War Warhammer 3 lists Franz, Meow, and Tyrion as beginner IE campaigns for newbies. Would you add or subtract any lords from that group? Yes, I would subtract Franz. Um, Meow, Ying, yes, I would probably put her in there. Um, and I would say that the, the, the most beginner lord is the Changeling. That is like the, the key beginner faction in the game. What's another one that I would put in as a beginner? You know, that's available to those that... I don't know. But yeah, I wouldn't put Carl Franz in as a beginner faction. Uh, Lee Murta did a two-dollar subject game in sad state when Siege Cheese is so easy. Elu? Yep, uh, thanks for Super Chat. It's... We've always been able to cheese sieges, but it's never been easier than with Warhammer 3. They could, their siege rework was a complete and utter failure. Oh well, what are you gonna do? Alright, let's get him more should I go down the red uh, the blue line? We get six percent replenishment, that's not that big of a deal. Cut up big jars would be good. I know I haven't finished his magic line. That's not terrible, if I ever decide to get more of those units. Mm, yeah, let's get Canopic Jar Hoarder. I do like my Canopic Jars, and since we can't cheese it anymore, well, we gotta get it anywhere we can. No Purple Sun? Don't really like Purple Sun that much. I really don't use magic spamming as much in Warhammer 3 as I did in 2. It just, it doesn't hit the same. It's not like the spells are bad, it's just that I just don't rely on it that much. My will be done. They nerfed some of the stuff too much. Now I just don't use it. Okay, Wizard Kellis Palace got to tier 4, that's good. We should build... Let's see here. This is good for generating canopic jars. Control and adjacent provinces. Lord recruit rank. All of this is good. It also provides a tomb prince in the garrison. Six grand. Though. Eight grand. Sorry, I can't read. Bone giant. I'm pretty sure this used to be in the other building. Or maybe I can... No, no. This building used to be in the other chain. Because it used to be considered a... A, um... Infrastructure building. Oh yeah, let's get a Tomb Scorpion. Absolutely. They used to provide two in Warhammer 3, but now it only provides one. It also used to be tier 4. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's an infrastructure building, so what if we gave you a... 
Charnel Valley Necrotect. What? Yeah, it lowered the price by like 1,200. That's pretty good. My will be done. Our money's not too bad. All right. As long as we don't lose this settlement, that's fine. <laughs> that's, the, that's the key thing there. I still don't think I need to upgrade this building. All right, if I upgrade this one here, we get one, no, two additional units. A tomb guard and another skeleton archer chariot for four grand. It's a, it's a steep price. Upgrade that for sure. Yeah, the garrison buildings for Tomb King's not amazing. That only give us 14 units. What's happening here? Oh, that doesn't matter. Absolutely not futile. My dynasty reigns supreme. Isn't Purple Sun more stationary and predictable? Yes, it's alright. It's alright. But I just I'm not prioritizing, that's all. I just don't think it's that important. Alright, we should build defenses here so that we don't lose it immediately like we did last time. And there goes all my money. Why not upgrade palace? Lol. What do you mean lol? What's funny about it? Why not upgrade the subtle? What do you mean by palace? You mean this? The engraved walls? What are you talking about? Okay, new new enemies. All right, all right, all right, all right. My glory. So his red line is done. Yeah, more Canopic Jars holding would be good. All right, and let's let's move on. Do you place importance end of blue line skill? More campaign movement range? Yes, that is pretty good. That is pretty good. I'm joking, I said the same thing earlier in the stream. But yeah, but I, I don't I don't even get it in terms of a joke. It, I don't I don't get it. <laughs> Alright, well we knew they were coming over here. Uh, we didn't upgrade these settlements. I can't defend everything. This guy's already immortal, so whatever. Oh, he wants to do that thing where he bounces around and just sacks constantly. AI loves to sack. I don't. I don't understand the strategic I thought behind that. Yeah, let's go sack a tier one minor settlement. Okay. Oh god, there's Wurzag. Do you know what's funny is that these two here actually kind of like each other now because they're both at war with me. Did you know Bretonia gets a Garrison Grail Knight from their worship building to tier 2? Yep. Yep. So these guys here, I've only ever known them to sack settlements. You got raided by PZA Total War, by the way? Oh, okay, thanks, dude. Yeah, appreciate that. It didn't pop up in the chat. Well, I didn't see it. Well, welcome, um, PZA's uh, viewers. Appreciate you. Convoy arrived. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I didn't wipe it out. I guess one thousand gold's better than nothing. Good. The extra campaign movement range by ten percent will definitely help. <coughs> and we're starting to get some better units. You know, legend up. Get get better units. Yeah, we're getting there. Now what? More answers. All right. There's going to be a revolt here over the end turn, and that's fine. We should be ready for it. Greatness comes. I will not obey. Hmm. I Is this army capable of handling him? I'm not sure. 
But we should be able to capture this and let me just have a look, make sure that there's nothing too dangerous out here. Something interesting is occurring here. If we come around this way, we can trap them in this area. Since they, they never occupy settlements, they don't just sack them. I can just maybe get at them. We've now got the... Con oh, but now I don't have the money. <laughs> well, I could cancel some buildings. But I like all the buildings that, being, that are being built. I'll just have to get some more loot. You are not him. So over here, that army is on the move somewhere. If I had to guess, I'd say that they made their way back up here. It would be good to reconquer this area here. And, you know, we got green skins on the way. That's a problem. Well, let's start by hitting this. Recruit outside of settlement in case rebellion sieges. It won't siege. Guarantee you it will not siege. Because a garrison is not the same as a set, as like a regular faction. They will take into consideration your garrison. Sorry, a rebellion is not the same as a regular um, faction. What they'll do is they'll judge your settlement based on its uh, garrison size. And because we've got upgraded defenses there, they'll wait a turn before launching an attack. At least a turn. Mm. Yeah, don't don't bother upgrading that right now. Black Tower. Defend your king. Slave. Oh shit. Look at this. We can actually reach him. But I'm, and that's all of their forces. I could possibly take them out, but they would have to run away. Uh, sorry, they'd have to not run away, and I'd have to be able to auto resolve it. Hmm. Imagine if I finally caught them. That's both of their armies. I think it's worth the risk. I think that they'll stand and fight, and I think it's worth the risk. Come on, stand and fight, and let me order resolve this, and be finally done with these fuckers. They're standing and fighting, and... Alright, what's the damage output? Doesn't matter, it's worth it. Please be done with them, finally. Let that finally be the end of that fucking rogue faction. Yes! Thank you, Jesus! <laughs> Thank you, Nagash. Finally! After seven armies, they are finally... That's a good item. They are finally fucking dead. Yeah, look at that. They're going to back each other up. Let's have a look here. If we... Oh, they still dislike each other. Actually, quite a lot. But they won't declare war. Oh, good. If you could take out the Blooded Axe Tribe, I would be greatly appreciative of that. Finally, they're gone. Oh my god, they have been such a nuisance this entire campaign. That will relieve so much pressure from this area. Because they're just constantly building pretty high tier armies. And uh, sacking my settlements. Was that the Book of Nagash effect? Yes, but I already I already beat them before, so I already had the Book of Nagash. But that, that was that army that had a Book of Nagash. Alright, that was really good. And we got a fair bit of loot money from it. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to take on those two armies at the same, same time, because this guy here is pretty worn out. I'm not sure if he'll be able to advance. Why don't we go into... Okay, why don't you sit in Martek, and you go into... I can't really see a good option here for going after them. We need we need some time to recover because our forces are still not amazing. Plus, I still want to capture the coastline here. Rapants will be coming back fairly soon. Although it will be four turns, I suppose. Still, we should smash some of these other settlements so we can guarantee where she's going to show up from.
Okay, just come and stand over here. I don't think they're going to do anything here because if they sack Eye of the Panther, I'll catch him next turn. And we just need some time to recover. Just get rid of this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm recruiting from that building. I need the capacity. Which I don't actually think that matters. I'm not sure. Good. Alright, don't build anything this turn because I need cash so that I can get another army. Alright, and over here, let's get... Shit. Um... Start with the second dynasty, I guess. My dynasty reigns supreme. Legions rise. Okay, that's all working out. Do you think Arkin could use a better mount? Uh, it's fine. He's fine. Uh, he could use one of that Dread Abyssal. Yeah, that'd be good. Maybe when Nagash shows up, you get a Dread Abyssal mount. Because Teclas, he he didn't have his Arcane Phoenix to begin with. He got that eventually. Alright, everything else looks fine. Yeah, we don't want to upgrade anything. Because we need an extra three grand so they can get another army. That's the most important thing that we can do right now. Petra watches. Alright, still got some more levels up here. Alright, we were going to get some more Canopic Jars. Alright, then let's let's do some more magic. Let's have a look. Soul Blight's pretty good. Let's grab that. They really need to be more skills than these lords. To rank 27 and just be like, there's nothing else I really want to put into here. I guess leadership is always good for undead units. Alright, and then let's move on. Hey chat legend, hope everyone's doing well. Just saw the reddit that you have had more viewers than Pharaoh. Well, that was in the first stream. Right now, that's not the case. Like, I'm not too far off it. Let me, let me just see. We're at... Let's end the turn. Uh, Pharaoh's got about 900 more players than us. That's fine. I mean, it is the weekend. It's Saturday, so... It's pretty much peak time to play. But the fact that it's only getting 2,900 players on its second week after launch... No charge bonus? Yeah, I'll get that later. A charge bonus is not essential. Beyond a certain point. Like, there's no point in getting, like, a thousand charge bonus. This isn't going to do anything. Um, well, it's not going to do much, I should say. It will always do something. Yeah, I really don't think Pharaoh is going to be supported long-term from Creative Assembly. But we'll see. Oh, Manfred, you got you got some big balls. I don't understand the strategic thought that goes into their mind where they're like, hmm, I know, I'm going to take my army and sack a settlement that was just sacked and get killed next turn. I don't understand it. Uh, construction costs not that big of a deal, but at the same time, canopic jars would be good. And that is for 10 turns. 40 canopic jars is not that big of a deal now, so I'll, I'll go with reinforce the temple. For 10% re reduced construction cost, I think we'll get a lot of value out of that. No. I, 
don't understand why you did this, Manfred. I just don't get it. See, I told you they wouldn't besiege. This guy running around as a scout is useful. Because this army can't take on a hell of a lot. We just need to be very careful with our engagements. But yeah, we should get rid of these guys here. Yes. They challenge me. Rome 2 has 7,500 players at the moment. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I don't really want to lose a unit. But at the same time, I also don't want to fight a bloody camp battle. Oh, I don't want to fight it manually. Their army is so small. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. I, I can't be losing units. I, I can't replace it this time. We should have a betting pool for how long, how soon we'll get the future of Total War Pharaoh post. when it takes it all. Okay, so... There are some things to consider with that. I don't think it's going to happen straight away because they're obligated to still make the DLC. They have to do it. I don't think they're going to refund the the deluxe packages. So they're... They've got to get that DLC out. Now, what they might do to save face... Hang on, just um, let me have a drink here. What they might do to save face is this. They might get the DLC done. It might already be done, right? The three Lord packs and the campaign pack. That might already be done. And what they'll do is, they'll officially end the support of, of Total War Pharaoh. But they won't say anything about it, right? They'll have some patches ready to go. Or maybe they'll, they'll do a tiny bit of work on it. And then they'll just move most of the workforce that worked on Pharaoh onto whatever the next project is and have like two people working on it. Because at the end of the day, the DLC will sell a little bit. You know, because there were a lot, most people I imagine bought the standard package, not the deluxe. Or the Dynasty Edition. That's, that's what I think is going to happen, but. So much of what Creative Assembly does just doesn't make any sense to me. I, I'm trying to predict what they do. I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Splitting up our forces is not a good idea because these guys really need a leadership unit nearby them or else they'll crumble too quickly. And having this guy here providing leadership and also people oftentimes forget that being close to a lord gives my will be done for melee attack and melee defense. That's pretty important for these skeletons here. If they don't have it, their stats are absolute trash. I mean, their stats are still trash even regardless. And they don't have any air effect attack, so there's really nothing to be concerned about. We just gotta grind through it. Pharaoh is a downgraded Rome 2 where you can play as a better Egypt. So, well, yes. Yes and no. But it's not the same Egypt. It's the same it's the same location for sure. But there is over a thousand no, it's a thousand years difference between the beginning of Rome 2 and the beginning of Total War Pharaoh. You know, one's in the Iron Age, one's in the Bronze Age. But in terms of battles, yeah, it like, Rome 2 should not be used as the benchmark for good battles, but the battles are better than in Pharaoh. HEO did a 2 Euro Super Chat. Check units of renown. Um, yeah, I'm aware of them. What do you mean, check them? But thanks for Super Chat. Did the former CA worker from yesterday's stream say anything about Thrones of Decay aside from the $40 to $50 price tag? Well, what they said was that there was discussion about it being uh, $35 to $45, which I don't think is going to happen now because of the massive backlash they've had to the prices. Um, so I don't think that that's actually going to happen. Yeah, these gorges are getting smashed. Um... But yeah, if if Ava could like get in touch with me via Discord or via email, I would I would really appreciate that. I I'd, I'd, I'd uh, want to have that discussion for sure. 
assuming, you know, there's a CA staff member, could, it, it, there is, you always have to doubt to some degree that maybe it's not legitimate information. We just, we, I just don't know for sure. How hyped are you for the release of Hyenas? <laughs> Super hyped, man. Join the pack. <laughs> CA must be so butthurt about that. Understandably so. What an embarrassment. And they should be embarrassed. What a joke. I can't believe how quickly Creative Assembly fell from grace in just two years. From, from uh, fucking heroes to zeros. Let's wait for this to finish. Yeah, it's such a good combination, bringing our guys back there. So this is good for melee infantry armies. CA should change Hyena's logo to a dead hyena. <laughs> oh, you know, when hyenas got cancelled, I had so many meme ideas, but I actually, I really didn't want to go too hard on Creative Assembly. But what I was going to do, uh, this might have been a bad idea, but I was going to get a picture of a, like a, a, a real dead hyena and just write, join the pack. But I was like, oh, this is, this is overboard. Like, I'd get blacklisted for this. <laughs> too late now! But yeah. Oh man, I, when that got cancelled, I wanted to rip into them so hard, but I was like, I, I more or less restrained a bit. I still ripped into them, but not as hard as I otherwise would have. Looks like all of their forces are here. I don't think those towers are doing very much. Hey Legend, don't you feel guilty for such low player turnout for Pharaoh since you constantly bashed it since trailer sarcasm? <laughs> okay, so let's let's just assume that you weren't being sarcastic there. The only people I feel bad for with Pharaoh is CA Sophia. Because as I've said before, and as pretty much every YouTuber has said, it's not their fault. It really just isn't their fault. Because honestly, what they did was pretty impressive considering they started with with what they did, they, you know, with Troy. Every bit of, of Pharaoh's failure is entirely to do with the leadership at Creative Assembly. Entirely their fault. And you know some funny things is as well? I heard that they were paying top dollar for streamers to try to, um, to like live stream uh, Pharaoh. And even then, it didn't work out for them. They, they spent a lot of money, I think, on marketing. It really just goes to show that no amount of marketing and um, recycling assets is worth it if you just don't make a good game. You gotta make a good game. That's their number one job, and they just don't do it. And I think it's also fair to point out, it's not necessarily a terrible game, <laughs> but it doesn't add anything to the Total War franchise, really, at least from a battle perspective. And, um...
the price doesn't match. They, they need to lower their prices. They've gone too overboard with it. They need to calm down on that surprise hiking. I think Ogre livestreams before bad because they're really ugly and their voice lines are annoying. Yeah, fair enough. Whatever For whatever reasons, I don't really care. Um, but yeah, they perform like absolute shit. Cool. Way better than what Auto Resolve said that we would get. Way, way, way better. Those Gorges. Yeah, they didn't do that much damage to us. They're all good here. We could probably revive to full. I don't think we really need to. I think I think we're good. Let's take it there. Oh, but killing this lord here would give us more loot money. And since we do need more cash, I should probably go for it. I disagree. Some amount of marketing can put feet in the door. Feet in the door can justify working on the title. It's not how it should be done, but it can be done. Yeah, it, it, you can definitely argue a point with, with marketing. Marketing is important. Don't get me wrong. Marketing is definitely important. Um, but I think what I was trying to say, and I think I said it badly, is that no amount of marketing was going to help Pharaoh. That's what I that's what I should have said. Thing is I would really like to see a good bronze age oh for fuck's sake. I don't even know why I bother I'm trying to run down units sometime. They pay the non total war streamers for it. What a great idea. As if their target audience is unaware. Well that's not not true. This is Creative Assembly's mindset from what I've heard, is that paying Total War YouTubers to live stream something that they're going to live stream anyway doesn't make sense. They're just, they're just throwing money down the drain, right? Um, so typically speaking, they only sponsor specific videos for um, basically advertisements from particular YouTubers. And some, some YouTubers did that, some didn't. Um, but when you... Get somebody who has never covered a Total War game, whose audience has never seen a Total War game, because most people in the world actually don't know that Total War exists, because um, it's not super mainstream. You expose your game to, what, 40,000 people when they did to that uh, huge live stream on Twitch? They probably had, most of them probably had never heard of uh, Total War. So even if only 1% of those people bought the game, it's, a, it's a, um, a good investment for Creative Assembly because from their point of view, if they get somebody to purchase Pharaoh and that's their first Total War game, then imagine all the other Total War games they can buy because Pharaoh is garbage. So it's not necessarily the worst idea. I will... Harvest their organs, I think. We're almost there. Land of the dead. Okay, don't get too close because we can't see exactly what's over here. And this army's not going to be able to handle heaps. So yeah, Manfred came around this way and I thought that was really silly. Looks like Wurzag is going straight for Al-Hayyik. Oh, with a lot of armies. Fucking hell. Yeah. Man, it doesn't look good. I could just cancel this. I'd get the money that I need. Yeah, look. Why don't we cancel this? That way I've got the money that I need to get... No, I can't. I need what I need right now. I need troops on the ground. New dynasty. Boom. 
Cool. Cool, cool, cool. With that, we can get a new army. And I can always just rebuild the ladder. Because that, that building was going to give us four units. Four admittedly decent units. But now I can re uh, recruit 19 trash units and a lord. Which probably still won't be able to defend against Wurzag. Unless I put one of these armies here, we're not going to be able to defend against it. He's not going to arrive next turn. Where should I be recruiting from? Probably in Vulture Mountain, because you want to be recruiting in a province that's got as many settlements as possible, since the minor settlements give you local recruit capacity. And this guy here is already recruiting in this province. Anyway, let's sort this out. It should be an easy order to solve. Oh, what the fuck, Biscuits? High quality fucking revolt. Shit. I still think I can beat it, because we outnumber it. And we've also got the legionary barrage that'll help against the tomb guard. This guy here is low tier. And they don't get the Ushabti summons, and we do. I, I'm pretty sure I can win this. And if I don't, not well. End of the road, there are 10 euro super chat. Hey, Legend, have you heard anything about the new Total War, like game Ancient Warfare, the Han Dynasty? Looks like a copy of Three Kingdoms, but not made by CA. Hopefully it's decent and good competition for CA. Ancient Warfare, the Han Dynasty. Let me have a look. It's an early access game. Very positive. It's only got a few people playing it. When did it come out? 27th of September. Wow, look at how many units that you can have on the field. That actually looks like a Total War game. Huh. So right, let me just show you what I'm seeing. Blum, blum, blum. Look at those fucking number of units. Dude, I might have to check this out. How many people are playing this game? Fucking no one. It's all in Chinese though. Surely there's English localization options, right? It is in English, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's in English. The audio is not in English. I don't care about that. Um, as long as the interface and subtitles are English, that's fine. I mean, I preferred playing Three Kingdoms with um, Chinese um, audio anyway. It sounded better. Hmm. That is something to look into, dude. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. That is definitely something to look into. Hmm. And if that is a total war killer, I'm all for it. I, I, will, I will look into that. Review say the translation is incomplete and the menus are Chinese. 
Nah, well that sucks. Well, shit, I'll still probably look into it anyway. Shit, I, I once played an entire game in Japanese, <laughs> and I don't speak, I couldn't read it at all. But I, still, I finished it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what it was. You, have you ever played Final Fantasy Tactics? Well, I bought a copy of that when I was in Japan, because I was trying to learn Japanese. So, I I beat Final Fantasy Tactics in Japanese, and I, I couldn't fucking read it. I could, I could read bits and pieces. And I probably I probably learnt a lot of Japanese while reading it. But man, so much fucking kanji, holy shit. That's a very text heavy game. So don't underestimate my ability to uh to read a foreign language. How the reviews though might be done update since? Maybe. Oh, it, it's definitely something to look at. Like, it says here that the game has 88% positive reviews. That is very promising. 88%. I mean, it's only been 600 odd players that have, um, checked it. I, I need to concentrate on this battle, guys. Can we get Spearman over here? This is where the Nehekaros stops coming. Okay, I really need these to go for the Tomb Scorpion. I don't have anyone that's really going to be able to handle that very well. You'll be able to handle that a little bit. Ugh, maybe not. Alright, let's get these two around the flank here. They're just not shooting. Okay, that's fine. As long as these Nehekara swordsmen, uh, Nehekara cavalry, whatever, they stay completely put, should be fine. Tomb Scorpion. I, th I think we're doing okay against it. It's not great against um, anti. It's not. It's not an anti-large unit. Now shooting into them from the back here means that we're bypassing their shields. And also at point blank range, super accurate. I think we're winning. I think we're winning. You used to live in Japan. I was a Japanese exchange student. So. Um, like, I went to... I lived in Japan for two months in 2002. Oh my god, that was 20 years ago. <laughs> um, in Tokyo for uh, for two months as an exchange student. It was a really good experience. Japanese didn't stick with me, though, uh, just because, from a career perspective, I didn't need it. But uh, I really enjoyed learning it at school. It's probably one of my favorite subjects. It's a good language. I don't like kanji though, too fucking hard. Just wait for him to get in the position. Ah, oh, this should. Looks fine. All right, you're gonna have to back off. You're taking too much damage now. With this one crumbling, actually, if you can cycle charge into it. One more hit. One more hit. Come on, do it. Right into its ass. Let you do it. Tatsu Monkman did a $5 super chat. Oh, are you trying to put Japanese in there, trying to get me to read it? Fuck, hang on, just give me a second. True Blue did a $10 super chat. Thanks, we appreciate it. Okay. All right, let me fucking read this. Okay, just hang on a sec. All right, it's hard to read because I'm not up to scratch and it looks small. Um, Gun Batsu. Oh, 
God. I recognize some of the letters. <laughs> I just recognize some of them. Dude, I haven't had to speak Japanese in 20 fucking years. Yeah, thanks for Super Chat. All right, so that's what it says, yeah. Now that you've spelled it out for me, right, Gambatsu Regendo. Right. Okay. I can't remember what Gambatsu means. <laughs> it's like a bike you can, you can't forget. You actually can forget. You actually can forget. If you don't speak a language for 20 years, you actually can forget. He's saying go for it. Good luck, Legend. Right, right. Fair enough. Should have kept up with it just in case of that one super chat 20 years later. Trying to embarrass me. That's no, all good. We don't get any money from that, so I'll just take the comfort jars. Can you read Cyrillic? No. The realm of souls fills with my foe. All right, let's see if we can push on to Lashiak from here. Stride to greatness. No more good units available. Just have to recruit trash. All right, still trying to decide what to do about Manfred. Because if I go after Manfred, that means I'm not going after Kofa or these settlements out here. But this guy here is on his way. I don't have any more heroes available, do I? Not now. My dynasty reigns supreme. I will not obey. That's right, I was gonna recruit a lord here. Alright, and this lord can join up with this one. Okay, that sounds good. Excuse me. Why am I keep getting all these trustworthy ones? If I load a character. Uh, loading a character costs money. Um, scavenger, I guess. Pretend your king slaves. Okay, that'll have to do. Right, so we'll get these two armies here to push up through here. Because I think most of Rapunzel's forces are beaten. Yeah, they are. And I'll actually get these two to maybe go towards Pools of Despair. And there's a good chance we're going to lose Al Haik. Uh, dealing with that, eh, no, not right now. We've got other issues. I don't know what Manfred was thinking coming over here. As if I wasn't going to clap his cheeks. Decipher the Rosetta Stone. Can you steal skull catapults from rebellions? I think it is possible to do that, actually. Alright, I think we should be fine to order that. Yeah, that was fine. Bit of damage, but nothing, nothing really to worry about. I will take the money. Because we're short on it now. The funny thing is, trustworthy is actually a fairly good trait, usually. I know, it, normally it is. Really good trait. Another one of those. But yeah, right now, in this particular campaign, it's kind of useless. Alright, we would replenish faster in this region down here. Arkan, yeah, you can go into... Oh, actually, we can reach Pools of Despair this turn. I didn't think I'd be able to. Can you possibly force March to get there? You can, okay. Do it. Alright, looks like we have to fight this manually, because yeah, that is not acceptable. But I've got some levels up to distribute that might help a little bit. 
If we can steal that armor of destiny, that would be amazing. But the guy's immortal, so we might get other opportunities. All right, we got levels up over here to put down. I haven't really looked at my um, equipment in a while. Oh, Trixus Helm, yeah. Let's put that on Arca instead of the Enchanted Shield. That's good. And I'll put... Yeah, I'll steal this. I'll put... This guy is immortal, so he can have the Armor of Silvered Steel. Actually, that one's better. Yeah, look at this. What do you think is better? 20 armor or 3 armor and 5 melee defense? Personally, I feel like 5 melee defense is way better than 20 armor. 20 armor is not much. Uh, Conqueror is not too... Um, there's no magic to deal with here. Yeah, Conqueror is good. Submit to your king. Good. Okay. Attack. Which is the better show, if you have seen them? The Simpsons, Family Guy, or South Park? Well, I haven't watched all episodes of all shows, but I've definitely watched a lot of episodes from all three of those shows. And I think all three shows has their merits. If you're looking for, like, really sort of... How to put this? Crude humor, but actually very clever, that is poking fun of society in that day and age, South Park is the way to go. If you're looking for crude humor, just, just being crude in general, then Family Guy is the way to go. If you're looking for like a, a really long show <laughs> that is pretty funny and has something for everyone, then obviously The Simpsons is the way to go. But there's no right or wrong answer. Okay, we need to wait for our reinforcements. They don't need to wait for theirs. I'll get Arkin to annoy them. CCR did a ten dollar super chat. May your second blacklist be as successful as your first. Thanks for the great content. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, thanks, thanks for the chat. Yeah, it's pretty weird, isn't it? It's pretty weird. Animus. I agree. Charge. Have you watched Gen V, the spin-off series of the boys yet? No, I haven't. I think our top priority needs to be getting rid of Ludwig here. They shall perish. If I can get him to chase us, that'd be good. Oh shit! What does being blacklisted mean, actually? Okay, so if we're gonna be this kind of stuff, I gotta be. Not careful with, but I should be as in, as uh, honest as possible with what the situation actually is. Blacklisting is not a term that Creative Assembly officially uses. It's just it's an easy term to explain the situation, that's all. So... Um... What does it mean? It just means I'm not in the partner program. And Creative Assembly is not associating with me. Actually, let me put that even clearer. I'm not associating with Creative Assembly. On a, uh, like, a direct level. Obviously, I'll still play their games. And I will just be an independent force. But I am not partnered with them in a sense that I'm part of their marketing department anymore. Which means I don't get the perks of being attached to their bad launches. And getting a free key every now and again. Which means absolutely nothing to me. Like, the, the cost of, of uh, Total War products for me is not a big deal because it's tax deductible Onwards, so it's just, it's just not an issue at all I now 
Now, Creative Assembly have said to me in the past that they don't they don't like the term blacklisted because they like to review situations in six to twelve months sort of thing with somebody and can reconsider it. But from my experience, they don't do that. From from what I've seen, they don't review things in six to twelve months. They will only if they if they've kicked you out of the program, you have to massively suck their ass if you want to get back into them into their um, program. Which is what I did, by the way. I had to fucking suck some ass to get back in. Uh, like basically grovel to get back in. Which, in hindsight, was a very stupid decision from me, but, you know, I thought second round would be okay. Now, I do not think that, let's just say, let's say in, um, let's just say that everything starts to get fixed within Creative Assembly. Uh, that the game starts being amazing and the community is like, yay, Creative Assembly, amazing again. Let's just say hypothetically that happens within the next six months. And that, if that does happen, my tune will change with Creative Assembly. I'll be like, good, good job, Creative Assembly. You know? Judge them for their merits. Let's just say that that happens, which I don't think is going to happen. I think it's going to be a bit of a longer tail than that. Um, but yeah, let's say that, that did happen. I think that Creative Assembly wouldn't give me the time of day six to twelve months from now. And they wouldn't piss on me if I was on fire. They despise me. Absolutely despise me. I am persona, persona non grata with Creative Assembly. That is what I have come to realize. And it's unfortunate. But yeah, they fucking despise me. And you know what? I fucking despise them. So it's mutual. Um, Cypren Zero did a 5 euro super chat. If CA wants positive feedback partners, you're not a partner. You're a glorified mouthpiece. Keep doing what you do, Legend. You're a real one. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Look, this is what this is what they do. Um, they say that you can criticize them. And you can. You can criticize them, and it's fine. But there's a degree of criticism that they say that basically crosses a line. Like, if you if you call, call them out for being scumbags, when they're being scumbags, then they will say that you're being disrespectful or hostile and um, saying that it's not professional, that kind of stuff. Um... I don't know, like, just just from my point of view, um, lying to your player base is not professional. Lying to your partners is not professional. That's pretty scumbaggy. So if Creative Assembly staff want to claim that they are professional, I would, I would really disagree that they were professional in their handling of me. Very unprofessional. They were insanely disrespectful. And of course, I was disrespectful back. I gave them as much respect as I received, which was zero. Being in the game industry is all about the money? I don't mind if it's all about the money, that's, that's fine. But is it really all about the money if you're absolutely shit at your job? You're showing signs of toxic personality? Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what you get. You know, if you criticize them too heavily, you're toxic. You can you can do light criticisms. Like if you say, hey guys, I think that this unit here could use a buff and I think Creative Assembly can do better. Then tolerate that kind of stuff. But if you're like, hey Creative Assembly, I don't think you should be, uh, be DMCA striking people. I think you owe someone an apology. Uh, that crosses a line. <laughs> or if you, if you make an agreement with them and they don't hold up their end of that agreement and you call them out on that, then that is crossing a line for them. No. Yeah. There's a lot of things like that. It's very unfortunate, but Creative Assembly will always try to control the narrative so that they're the victims, that they're the good guys, but they are absolutely not the good guys. They are the perpetrators in every sense of it. And I don't make it easy on them, but that's by deliberate choice. Anyway, that's, that's the sort of general situation with CA. Look, I'm going to support their games if they make good games, but, you know, am I ever going to work with them again? Fuck no. I wouldn't touch them with a 10-foot pole. I don't ever want to, like, hear from them again. Fuck off. Scumbags. Absolute scumbags. Alright, they're not coming at us. The stuff that I've heard about that goes on at CA, oh, it makes me sick. 
makes me absolutely sick. Anyway, let's move on. Well, it's also about covering up your own incompetence in the game industry. Yeah, look, that's fine. Look, it's not actually. I think I think it's better to take ownership of your of your of your mistakes and try to be better for it. But that's not what Creative Assembly does. They blame everybody else. It's not. Oh, it's not our fault that the DLC or the game didn't sell. It's not our fault. It's somebody else's fault. Because we're perfect. We do everything industry standard. We're perfect. Okay, we need to really focus on getting rid of these missile units. Going into a, a blob is not a good idea. The CA or Blizzard? You, yeah, you... Look, I don't have any experience with Blizzard, but yeah. Um, it, it is CA. I don't want to give specific examples of, of what I've heard, because I don't really want to start shit. Also, Creative Assembly is really fucking trigger happy with litigations. With like... Um, uh, like cease and desist, so just just litigations and stuff. So I really don't want to be caught on on the end of that. But oh my god, it makes me fucking sick. Just how bad they are. Maybe it's just try, uh, best to try to avoid discussion for your mental health. No, no, it doesn't hurt my mental health. If anything, it's good for it. Oh, I can't read that. Did an RSD 100 super chat. Support your legend. Good luck. Have fun. All right. Thanks, dude. I appreciate that. Let's bring this one in. Thing is, if they bring them in, they'll probably try to target them. And there's so many missile units. So usually what I want to do is target the archers once they commit their melee infantry. King of the artillery are doing a good job. Lots of damage in there. This is going well so far. Love the Rome disaster battle. Didn't remember units being so squishy. Well, it depends. Uh, with squishy units. It depends on your battle difficulty. The AI get massive cheats on higher difficulties in Rome Total War. And also, there's a huge difference between... A like a Principe and a garbage Carthaginian unit, like a tier one Carthaginian unit going up against a tier two Roman unit. Um, Carthage can't compete with Rome in Rome Total War in the infantry side of things. It, Rome's just way better at it. But yeah, units can be insanely squishy in that game. They'll fold on on an instant, which which can be a good thing. It can be a good thing. You don't want units always fighting to the death. That's not a good uh, situation to have. Alright, what we're going to do is just keep them as busy as possible. Just, just one final note. I just want to say that even after everything that's gone on with Creative Assembly, everything that I've heard about them, if they make a good game, I'll support it. But yeah, getting into bed with them again? Oh, hell no. Hell no. No thanks. Twice is enough for me. This one's taking too much damage from the back. We've got him on the run. Let's let's advance. We really want to pin down as many of these archers as possible. Yes, 
Do you think the health system has been bad feature for Total War ever since it was added? That's a really good question, actually. I'm going to pause the battle to explain that. Um, that's really, really good. Yes and no. Yes and no. So it depends on the situation. For Total War Warhammer, the health system is absolutely necessary. For non-fantasy games... Okay, the, the game, the the health system has always existed in Total War games to some degree. It's just that it depends on how you look at it. So if you look at the earliest Total War games, the first four, Shogun 1, Medieval 1, Rome 1, and Medieval 2, units either had one hit point or two hit point. What that meant was that in order for a unit to die, an enemy unit had to like successfully land a hit on it. So in Total War Warhammer as an example, when a successful hit is done, then it then checks for weapon damage. So you have to get, in many cases, multiple successful hits on a single unit in order to kill it. But in Rome Total War, it's as an example. Okay, let's just actually let's use Medieval 2 as an example. It's probably easier. If you have a peasant unit go up against a like a single peasant, go up against a single knight, right, and charge them in on each other, it is possible, it is possible for that peasant to defeat the knight. So let's just say that the peasant had one attack. And um zero defense one defense and the knight had 10 attack and 10 defense right so the the peasant would come up and it would make a strike and the chances of it actually landing that strike and getting a, a hit on that knight was like fucking it, it wasn't it wasn't zero percent but it was really low it was like five percent something like that right but it was still possible so it would charge in and one in 20 times or one in friggin' a hundred times, it would actually kill that knight. Now, in Total War Warhammer, right, if you take a peasant unit up against a knight, and you send that peasant to go and fight the knight, a hundred percent of the time, the knight will win. A hundred percent. Because if the peasant landed a strike, most of its attack will get blocked because of armor, and it'll only do it, it'll only, it doesn't have enough damage to kill that unit. Whereas the knight, um, has enough damage to kill the unit instantly, and its chances of hitting is um, basically 90%. So you have a situation in Total War uh, Medieval 2 and, and previous where low-tier units could potentially overcome great odds um, if you got lucky enough, right? But in the later stages of the Total War games, no chance. No chance at all. Like, peasants will never defeat a, a knight, in um in like total warhammer so in the fantasy style games i think the health bars are fine but in the earlier stages of the it's like, like in historical games i think it's quite detrimental because you've also got a situation with archers right where archers will shoot like in you look at earlier total war games right where they shoot the actually i think the health bars came from rome too so it, it includes all the way up to shogun 2 so a volley would would land on a unit and it would it wouldn't just take off their hit points it had a chance of killing them so what you'd see is the first volley would land and maybe 5 to 10 troops would die the more armor that they had the less chance they had of dying and it was also possible that a volley would go in and not kill anyone if if like for example if you were using in say Rome Total War tier 1 archers and you were shooting into cataphracts there's a good chance that you won't kill anyone, right? Um, but in the later stages of the Total War, you might have a really high tier archer shooting into a low tier unit and your first volley kills no one because it just hurt them, lowered their hit points. So what you end up having is a situation where nobody dies straight away, but then everyone dies really quickly. So it's uh, it's it's got a bit of a lopsided way of the of the battle. I should maybe use a graph. <laughs> Hang on, do I have my old graph up here? Hang on, let me look. I do. I got this one from earlier. So it goes like this. But it's it's a it's a really good question that one for sure. Okay, so. Hang on. Whimsy did a five dollar super Would you consider branching out to other game franchises since Total War is basically dead after Pharaoh? I really don't see how CA bounces back. Thanks for super chat. I have confidence that they will bounce back. Actually, I should have kept the um. The actual lines there that was pain in the ass to to make. Are these two D or three D? Okay, just just leave that. Okay, so it goes like this. Um, it goes. 
number of units still alive. Uh, hang on, hang on. Time. So we'll need two different graphs here. We'll go with a red one. So we'll go, no, not use that one. Go with this one. And this one here will represent one HP. So that's if, if troops all have one HP, this is the old system. Actually, maybe I'll put it as the old system. The old system. Okay, and the new system, which is where they add hit points, we'll just call the, well, we'll just call the new system. Okay, so we start with here being at 100%. There it is. So that's 100% of the units in something is still alive. Uh, hang on, CCR became a member for 43 months. The health explanation is a perfect example of why you're the GOAT of strategy streamers. All right, thanks, appreciate that. Okay, so if we look at the new system, this is what happens with it. Okay, the old system does this. Okay, so they're all dead at the same point, but you get more casualties at the beginning and fewer casualties at the end of its engagement. So that's that's the system there. So at the end of it, they're all still dead at the same same rough time, but that's because these guys here, they don't start dying until their hit points has hit zero. Whereas these guys here get critical hitted all the way throughout the battle. Hope that, hope that makes sense, hope that makes sense. But that was a very good question. Old system seems better. Both systems have its merits. You need the new system for Total War Warhammer. You can't have the old system for Total War Warhammer, right? But for Total War Pharaoh, as an example, it really should use the old system. Yeah. Like, every... Every uh, soldier, like base soldier, should have one hit point. And it should be a case of, if they get critical hit, they die. That system is better. For historical Total War games. So do you prefer the old system or new hit point system? Like I said, for Total War Warhammer, for fantasy Total War games, where you've got larger than life characters, you need the hit point system. But for, for purely historical Total War games, you need to use the old system. Why not for Warhammer? Because you've got characters and units that are, like, stronger than the average human. So you need a system that's robust enough to handle that. Because, okay, imagine this happened. Imagine a Vargulf showed up, right? And one arrow killed it. Imagine that. Just the first arrow fucking killed it. Doesn't doesn't make any sense, right? What about leadership versus morale? It's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing. Um, the okay, so the leadership versus okay morale in Total War games has changed depending on which Total War game you're looking at, but let let's call it this way. Dynamic morale versus static morale. I would say that Total War Warhammer is a static morale system in that morale is... I don't even know if that's the best way to uh, explain it. Morale is not robust in Total War Warhammer. It's not robust in Total War Warhammer, Total War Troy, Total War Pharaoh, uh, Rome 2, and... No, those are the games. Those are the games that's not robust in. In every other Total War game, it's robust. And what I mean by that is that you don't 
rely very heavily on using morale to win your battles. You can do it, but it's not heavily relied upon. And that's because every unit in the game has very high morale. And your ability to cause morale shocks is very minimal. You know, things in other Total War... Like, you take Rome 1, for example. You're going up... You've heard, Your line is holding up against the superior forces. And they're, they're grinding down against your uh, troops. And in a straight-up fight, you just can't win. But then your cavalry arrive, and you kill the enemy general. And then you charge the fuck into their rear. And the whole line of infantry just completely crumbles. Not crumbles, like, like it, it routes dynamic morale system where you can overcome great odds by using morale in total war warhammer that'll never fucking happen if you kill the enemy general their troops don't care that much only only at the if their troops are low tier enough would they matter in total war warhammer in rome 2 troy pharaoh and rome 2 um yeah you have to kill them in order to rout them in the other total war games you rout them in order to kill them <laughs> So like in Shogun 2, as an example, you don't have to kill the entire army to win. You just have to cause a rout. Um, and it's relatively easy to do. Same thing with Empire Total War, Napoleon Total War, Medieval 2, um, Medieval 1, Rome 1, Shogun 1. You can use killing the enemy general and shocking the enemy troops into routing superior forces. Not so much in this. Um, Icarus plays at a 5 dollars Do you use any mods in Warhammer 3? And do you have any specific mods you believe are good additions to the game or a specific faction? Uh, I would say SFO is good. There are loads of good mods out there that I haven't really looked into it. Attila dynamic? Yes. Attila is dynamic because killing the enemy general um, has a massive morale... Actually, Attila's got one of the best morale systems in any Total War game, right? Because most units have very high morale, but your ability to inflict morale damage is really high as well. Sorry, squeaky chair. Um, so, in Attila, you kill the enemy general, and this is the only Total War game that they do this, where if any unit routes after their general has killed, they, they are instantly shattered. They cannot rally. It's the only Total War game that does that, and I don't know why they didn't bring it back, because it's one of the best things about Total War Attila. Makes total sense. If the general's dead, the person who's commanding the army, and the unit routes, it doesn't rally. In every single other Total War game, you know, they constantly fucking keep coming back again and again and again, sort of thing. Um, and also, you've got things like whistle arrows to inflict massive morale shock, and also the cavalry in Total War Attila has a lot of impact, so charging into the rear of an elite unit, you do have a chance of breaking it. But that doesn't happen in Rome 2. In fact, Rome 2 has probably got the least amount of morale dynamic in any Total War game I've ever played. Except for maybe Troy. And I've never played Pharaoh, so I can't really distinguish on that one. Now, there's merits to all systems. It just depends on what you prefer as a player. Personally, I prefer high morale, morale systems. And despite the fact that... Sorry, I prefer dynamic morale systems, not high morale. Um, despite the fact that uh, Total War Warman doesn't have that, it's got other things that I like, so I just don't lean into the things I don't like. Um, let's, let's get some more melee defense there. Mehikara rises from the sands. Whimsy did a two dollar super chat. Will you ever try Mountain? Sorry, you ever try Mountain Blade before? Yeah, I've played a fair bit of Mountain Blade. I like it. It's a good game. This guy is more damaged than Arkan, so let's take Arkan out of the city and put him in there to so get more replenishment. Okay, looks like we're finally getting somewhere here, so that's good to see. Did a fair bit of damage to them. They're good there on the ropes. Okay, yeah, so their army is here. Their army is here at Sudenberg. The way we found that out is if you have a look here, you can actually see there's a like there's a flag here. That means there's an army there. The game actually tells you. <laughs> so if you go into this map mode here, you can actually see where their armies are in the fog of war. Yeah, there's an army right there. So we know that it's actually at Sudenberg. 
Thanks, to, somebody reminded me before. I didn't acknowledge it, but it reminded me of that. Oh, right, because Ark and the Black was here before, and then he's not. Uh, if I repair that, we should be okay, and that'll give us an extra recruit slot. Um, let's just get more growth. Attend your king, slaves. I might actually be able to hold on to the Great Desert of Araby now. Oh, then again, Tlaqua. Uh, let's just, let's just not bother. I, I feel like that's going to be a waste of money. Al Haik, yeah, that's probably going to fall. All right, let's check for new enemies. Yes, there is a new enemy. The Sentinels. Man, this is as far east as I've managed to go so far. Okay, cool. Let's move on. Did you enjoy Attila Charlemagne campaign? Yes, I think that Attila Charlemagne campaign was the best campaign for Total War Attila. Silence. Do not bow. No, sorry, etc. My opinion, Tilla was always underrated. It depends on what you judge it on. There's problems with Total War Attila. It's got some really good features for sure, but it's also got some serious problems. The Chinese Total War looks a bit scuffed. There are some videos on YouTube. Uh, yeah, it probably is, but yeah, you know, I kind of want to look into it. <laughs> you know, what Total War game isn't a bit scuffed? But yeah, you know, let, let's just see. It's only 25 bucks and it's tax deductible, so. I cannot. Volkmar the Grim. Well, he made a silly move because I can attack him. Quite easily. You've got to be careful about attacking the Black Tower of Arkin because the Black Pyramid of Nagash is right there. And Sentinels. I don't think they'd come and attack you. Greatness comes. What? Alright, it's good that we can reach Lashiek. Right, we've got that for one more turn. Got more than a full stack and they're starting to recruit something. Do you take me for a child? But our army's not exactly good. I shall take your advice. I could recruit eight more units before Legions rise! Hmm. Recruit eight more units. That's a lot of movement points. Arise. And this one will get a chance to replenish. I will not black myself. Now, if I'm not mistaken, most of this army is just I full of trash. They've got no. 28 units. Tw sorry, 24 units. Never. And we have 21, so we're outnumbered. Hmm. I need to keep recruiting. If I went and attacked that, I'm pretty sure I'd lose. Too, it's, the our force is too basic. Yes, see it is done. Well, I can recruit nine units actually. I don't think. Uh, you know what? I'll actually get a carrion. Why not? Is there a special building at the Black Pyramid for Arkan? Yes, it's the same that everybody gets. The um, the Vault of Nagash. Priest King of Greatest Dynasty. This army here had its movement stolen. Oh, I know what happened. Yeah, because it was borrowed movement from when it like landed here before. I just finally caught up with him. Okay. You have Casco Souls available. All right, right, right. Yeah, but I need I need five grand to get it. I don't have it available though. I don't have five grand. Okay, the defeat trait for um, for Volkmar the Grim is good. I reign. 
I think I'd... Is this guy disciplined? Yeah, I'd run and get it for him. He's not going to be able to beat Volkmar on his own. Attack and destroy. Just think about what to send in to help him. Yeah, of course. Hikara will be mine. Nah, he's on his mobility scooter. What's up, Ash viewers? Did we get raided by Ash? Cool, well, welcome everyone. Welcome to stream. What are your thoughts on having multiple resources like in Total War Troy? I, actually, that's one of the things I like most about Troy. Um, yeah, that's that's a good system for the Bronze Age, for sure. Like, on the campaign side of things, Troy and Pharaoh look good. And if I could just turn off the battles, I would probably play those games. But... Ugh, every time I fight a battle in Troy, it just... I just don't want to. This is not good battles. And Troy and Pharaoh looks even worse. Mm, as much as I want to take the Black Tower of Arkhan. Not possible. Oh, uh, El Calabat is a minor settlement battle. We're gonna need to bring all the bloody force Destroy over here. Okay. Uh, just trying to think how to go about this. Unwise. Yeah, it's a minor settlement battle. I can see why now that he he put his army there. My orders. Hmm. Because that. I do want to go. I think I should just bring all my forces over. Don't risk anything. Yeah, we'll just bring it all over. Because this is a massive blow. We don't want to fail. We don't want to fuck this up. This is too important of a battle to screw up, so bring out our forces. Can you cheese minor settlement sieges with cavalry heroes? No, not really. You'll never cap all the points. Because you, you can't just um, cap one point and win. If I auto this, no units gets wiped out. Because this battle will probably take a little while to fight it manually. I'll let chat decide. Okay, guys, there's going to be a poll. You guys get to decide this. You've only got a minute, so I'm going to do what you want. It's a minor settlement siege. Keep in mind that this battle will probably take me half an hour. So you tell me what you want. And I'll do it. WimCJ2 dollars in chat. Least favorite for me is to fight as Tomb Kings. Is Grimgore? Yeah, Grimgore is such a pain for sure. Okay, guys, you've got one minute to vote. Ooh, it's pretty close, but Order Resolve is winning. It's very close. 56 to 44, 57 to 43, 56, 44. It's very close. Fifty-five to forty-five. Oh god, I hate it when it's this close. I wish it was a hundred percent for either way. Fifty-five, forty-five. Time's up. Rise, my legends. Rise. I'm pretty happy with those results. It's very evenly spread out damage. That, look, to be honest, that battle would have taken me a long time. Won't you lose more skellies to an auto? Yes. Trust me, if I had fought the battle manually, it would have taken fewer casualties, but honestly, I'm pretty happy with that result because it was nice, evenly spread out casualties. We're going to recover. Hang on, did I lose the Asharp D? No, no, they're fine. No units got wiped out. Still 20 in all of them. 
Yeah, look, the casualties are kind of yeah, evenly, evenly spread out. Like, don't get me wrong, we took a lot of damage. <laughs> but we don't have any other fights out here, which is why I was willing to auto-resolve it. Yeah, not so bad. We'll recover. And it was a really good amount of experience as well. So that's good. Yeah, his red line sorted. Let's make him stronger. Conqueror is good. And let's go with that. Yeah, that spells okay. Still needs to um, finish down the red line. Okay, so it would be good to get to Black Tower of Arkham. Do we have new enemies to declare war on? Hopefully not. No, that's good. Uh, will you get Tic Tac Toe's trait? Extra camp and movement range? Um, if he comes at us, sure, but it's not a priority. Alright, we, we can't go too far down south. We can't let um, Wurzag ravage the northern coast. Okay, how strong are they, the Sentinels? Alright, we, sh we should be okay. If we send these two armies to go and take the Black Tower of Arkhan, it should be okay. Arkhan could use a little bit more magic. Cool. I don't think we're going to have any, any serious trouble capturing Sudenberg. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, hang on. Mentor might actually be quite handy for that one. Oh, hang on. I'm get one point into it. Cool. Is Wurzag trait for... With it for Arkan? Oh, well, it's worth it for anyone. It's just not a priority for us because we don't make one-man doom stacks with Jim Kings. Uh, Wurzag's trait is primarily for making one-man doom stacks, which again, not really focusing on. All right. No, I need to save up that money because it would be good to get a casket of souls right before we launch that attack. This is getting more secure, but I think we can wait on it. Let's just let's just not build anything. All right, looking at this, yeah, that's right. We're waiting on the incantation of Tahoth. Good, that's coming along. We should be able to get a few scorpions right away. If I had a lord ready to go for it, there. All right, let's double check this again. All right, move on. Do you think that Total War Game of Thrones will ever be a thing? Seems unlikely in the next 10 years, for sure. Um, I'd never say never, and it's definitely something that I would probably enjoy. But I don't see it as being likely. I think what is likely to happen if Creative Assembly is going to make Total War games of other IPs, Warhammer 40k seems like the most obvious choice. I know that a lot of people will be like, oh, you can't make it out of 40k. I'm pretty sure it's coming. Lord of the Rings would be, like, another one that's fairly likely. I've heard rumors about a Star Wars Total War, but I also think that that's bullshit. Um, they probably would have lost the contract after this year anyway. <laughs> Alright. 
Alright, they bought us another time. Another tournament. Um. Those are the ones that seem likely. Embrace. Outside of that, I really don't know. I always thought Arkans Crypt. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, fuck. I should go back to bed. Um, I th always thought Arkans Crypt Ghouls are super OP for the early game. Your opinion on them? They're okay. They're okay. I, I don't think they're OP, but they're okay. Star Wars Total War would be too hard to make. Probably. Probably. Like I said, I just heard a rumor about it. It was ages ago. It's probably not happening. I have heard a rumor that there is a fantasy Total War game being made that isn't Warhammer. But what it actually is, I have no idea. Alright, well, they recruited... Oh, they must be globally recruiting. And Repants is here. Okay, well, we've got nine additional units now. I really want to go for that. Sweet, sweet. I guess. I'm at 89% there. Hmm. This over here is a big, big problem. Got 20 units. That's 10. 30 units versus there. 24. Do I not have another Lord available here that's actually pre This guy's prepared. Okay. Battle skills 8. He might have the, the Resurrect. He might have, I'm just not sure. Well, worst case scenario is I lose. All of the stuff is quite easy to replace. Oh, also, I've got Regiments of Renown. So, we could get... I could get the casket, that's right. Alright, why don't I send this one to... Let me just check this. This one's already got the trait, so we need to make sure this one doesn't launch the attack. This one's higher level than this one. Okay, well, you just, I just want to have a little bit of a look up here and see what they've got. But yeah, this one here can't launch the attack. Has to be the other one. No. Mm, mostly melee infantry. Yeah, I remember that. It's just melee infantry spam. So, that'd be good against it. So would the... Yeah, okay, let's do it. Great incantation of the Hoth. Let's do it. Total War Nintendo. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Sega would be able to get the rights to that. Why not hire all of them? Yes, it could. I don't think I need that. Oh, if I get that other character, that one's probably got Rapunzel's defeat trait. This one here definitely doesn't have it. So yeah, don't use that. Alright, we might even be able to auto-resolve this now. I don't think I should do that. <laughs> Considering what they've got, the only dangerous units are two archers. That's it. Everything else is melee infantry, which doesn't count for shit. Obviously, apart from Rapants. Oh, honestly, we'll be fine. We gotta fight it manually, but we'll be fine. Total War Sonic. Yeah, I don't see that happening. I see some war armies in the distance. Yeah, I know. I, I just can't deal with everything. Total War Pokemon. Only on Switch. We'll probably outsell Troy. Um. Okay. 
Yeah, could you imagine a, po a, a Total War game where you've actually got Pokemon? That actually could be pretty good. I, I don't see that happening though. Just gotta wait for my reinforcements because there's no chance this army here with current stake will be able to handle that. What's with the carrion? Deal with the archers. Here they come. Oh shit, are they advancing now? No. Alright, you need to get around the side here. I thought I told them to... No, I told the other units. Okay. So they're that cavalry, so I'm not expecting too much in terms of flank attacks. Alright, here we go. Probably wouldn't be winning this battle if it wouldn't wasn't for the carrion. They're gonna save us here. Elden Ring Total War. Look, I'm fine with any Total War game setting as long as they do a good job. If they pick my favorite setting, the Roman time period, and do a bad job of it, I won't play the game. Which is why I don't play Rome 2 anymore. Um, they pick my least favorite setting and do a good job on it, I'll play it. So I would have been more than happy to play a Bronze Age Total War game, as I've said before. I'll fucking play Total War My Little Pony if the mechanics are good. Because you know what the thing is, is like when Total War Warhammer was announced, I didn't really care much for Warhammer. I thought it was silly. I obviously don't feel like that way now. But I thought it was fucking silly. I was like Lord of the Rings ripoff. But I gave it a chance and it worked. The square formation, is that like Rome or Napoleon time? This? Um, neither. This is not, this is not square formation from Napoleon. We're not dealing with a cavalry based army. Oh yeah, look at these friggin' carrion, kind of beat peasant archers properly. Fucking useless pieces of shit. This is keeping them distracted, somewhat. Okay, you need to come around here, be shooting into flanks. Actually, go around this side. Might get a little bit of friendly fire, but it'll be worth it. I think. Okay, can't be saying they don't want them getting into melee with anti large. Okay, Rapunz is going down. We're definitely winning. Not seeing any major issues. This unit here is taking a bit too much damage. Let's pull it back. Let's move these guys back a little bit. Don't care if the carrion gets wiped out. Only recruit it for this one battle. Oh, my God. 
Oh shit, get this one out of here. There goes the carry in. Oh, what is that? First casualty. What a surprise. Alright, now this guy's taking too much damage against Rapance. Move back. This looks like this unit's crumbling away. Yeah, we're definitely going to take a few casualties, but way less than what Order Resolve said. Way less. Am I remembering correctly what you can recruit a Shadow Wizard as Tomb Kings, but need a Book of Nagash for that? That sucks so much to have your best lore so locked. Yeah, it, it does suck. And that is true, yeah. Oh, shit. I feel like our archers weren't really shooting much in this battle. Five hundred kills on the casket of souls. Oh, shit, this one's about to break. Oh yeah, the battle pilgrims do a fair bit of damage. Be careful. Dead unit. Okay, I need to get this one off the battlefield, or else it's going to get wiped out. And I can't replace my archers, because I don't have enough barracks now. Melee infantry, no big deal, can replace that. Okay, it rallied. Okay, it's fine. It's fine, then. And there's the army losses. Nice. Okay, I wasn't ever worried about winning or losing that. It's about not taking too much damage. Second the best lore of After Shadows for Tomb Kings. Um, I would say equal with Light and Nehekara. Both of them not amazing. I feel like Light Magic has really sort of not been my favorite. It, it used to be one of my go-to laws of magic, but lately I just, I just don't really care for it much. Uh, never really been that much of a fan of death magic, because it spells the kind of shit. It's definitely better than it used to be. But yeah, Tomb Kings don't have good magic. Not really. Until they get Shadow Magic. Shadow Magic's definitely their best. Hey, Mercy the Mad, how's it going, dude? Why... Why are Wood Elves bad in Order Resolve? It doesn't weigh Stalk and Ammo as much. Yeah, it seem it does seem like well they don't have armor and they've got low melee defense and those are two stats that are very highly ranked in auto resolve and auto resolve doesn't rank speed very highly. So that probably is a major contributor. All right, the damage from that is very easily recoverable. And we've just got another Rapance trait. So that's good. I think that's 35% that we've gotten from Rapance now, which is really bloody good. Me as your highness. And then let's get. Let's get this one, some more of this. And some more of this. We can now globally recruit in one turn, that's good. Where's the shadow book in this? Okay, it's over here. It's over here.
How does capturing captives work? So I'm playing playing as Dark Elves in Warhammer 2 and I'm confused. Um, to be honest, I'm confused with it as well. You're best asking Mercy the Mad. He actually understands it really well. Um, I, I find it confusing as well. I never really looked into it too much. Because he plays a lot of Dark Elves and it is very important for the Dark Elves, for sure. Yeah, this whole area here, this is going to blow up pretty much. We definitely don't want Wurzag to destroy Rapunz. I'm still not done with her yet. Submit to your king. I don't really want to go down south. I'm awake. Wurzag's only rank 12. Okay, that's not so bad. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Yeah, the scorpion's available. Yeah, but I don't have a... Oh, hang on. No, they're not ready yet. They'll be ready next turn. Um, I'll get a new lord, a treacherous lord. Surely eventually. I should have one available here. Yeah, I can't... Let me just have a look. Treacherous. Yeah, I've got one available here that I can recruit. I just need more army capacity. Or disband one of these other armies. I should also get rid of these units here. Um, regiments of renown are good for emergencies. Which this is not now. Good Vulture Mountain upgraded. We could build some def uh, amount of money. Yeah, I wouldn't mind getting another Tomb Prince. Let's do that. Good units. Good heroes. Alright, if I attack Black Tower of Arkan, there's a landmark there for us, which is pretty good. Control plus two faction wide. Canopic Jars. It's, it's all good. Gotta get tier four, though. It'll take a while. Not possible. Striking down on Volkmar here. Also important. Alright, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send Arkan by himself to attack Sudenberg. Let me just check this area first. Yeah, min there won't be any counterattack. Man, look at these fucking priests. Yeah, Arkan will do this by himself. Should be able to handle that easily. These two are going to go after the Black Tower of Arkan by themselves. Either one's able to launch the attack. Let's go with this one. Send the okay, let's read it out. Mercy says, Basically, you capture any troops that are killed while they are routed or shattered or crumbling. Then you get half of the captured dudes as slaves. Okay. Arise, my legions. Run! Nehekara will be mine. Alright, so if we have a look in the settlement here, it has no cavalry. Alright, we should all get on horses. Oh, they don't get a horse, man, and they have chariot. Okay, well, it just doesn't look good in then. Okay, if we all have horses, this will be super easy. Zero casualties incoming. Do you think it'll be good to increase the benefits of defeating Lord traits multiple times by the same Lord? So if it's plus 10 melee attack and one Lord defeat it, that, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I'm definitely down for that. That'd be cool if you have like multiple tiers of a defeat trait. That's a great idea, dude. God, you should be working at Creative Assembly. And that way you could earn minimum wage and then get fired. <laughs> for somebody else's fault. I swear, some of the ideas that the community come up with are so much better than whatever Creative Assembly spits out of their ass. That's a great idea. And that would also mean that your 40 defeat trait limit isn't so limited because you've actually got, you know, defeating a lord multiple times, which will happen to you in a campaign. You know, you very rarely ever fight a legendary lord once and then never fight them again. 
It's a great idea. Of course, you'd have to make you'd have to nerf the initial trait. So yeah, that is something. But yeah, it's a great idea. I uh, just gotta wait for my other lord to show up. I don't know even know why I'm doing that. Hey, five times you unbow trait, let's go. <laughs> yeah, no, this should be a limit. I think three should be a limit. But no, I think that's a great idea, dude. Really good. Good thinking. CA furiously writing it down. Alright, let's go. Defeating Lord Tier 1 trait, wiping their faction Tier 2 trait. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Yeah, great idea. CA Community Manager has recently said they can't implement direct community feedback because of legal problems, so there's that. Hmm, that's interesting. Sounds like bullshit to me. I don't know, like, I, I'm not versed on the legal stuff of it, but it's, it's, that sounds like bullshit. I don't really, like, I have just bore witness to so many Creative Assembly lies now that I, I, I find it so hard to believe pretty much anything that they say. They've lost all credibility. Like, if Creative Assembly came out and said, the sky is blue, I would seriously question whether that was actually true. Am I sure about that? <laughs> That's what happens when you just lie all the time. What are you gonna do? He didn't say that? Fair enough. Like, I'll give you an example of a Creative Assembly lie that they told me ages ago. I haven't, I haven't told about this one um, till right now. So, you guys know that a while ago, I, there was talks at some point about doing voice acting for a role for um, Warhammer 3. Or This was during Warhammer 2, though. Um, and Creative Assembly were, at least in talks with me, receptive to it. They said, oh yeah, this is something that we can possibly do, but you know, COVID. And what they said was, um, and I've got this in writing, is that they don't, they do all of their voice acting in-house. So I was like, oh yeah, fair enough. And it was during COVID time, so naturally I couldn't leave the country uh, to go to Britain to do any voice acting. But then I later found out that they absolutely do allow uh, for people to do voice acting remotely. So it was like a hundred percent lie. They just told me that to shut me up because it, it did. It worked. It shut me up, but it was a lie. Zaboyo did a ten dollar super chat. That's that's exactly what it was like dealing with Creative Assembly. It's just like they tell you something and then you find out that it wasn't the truth and just like, well, that's another lie. It's just like constantly that kind of stuff. So I just don't know why they didn't say the fucking truth. Just they're like, why couldn't they just say we don't want you as a voice actor? Fine. It's <laughs> fine. Don't, don't leave me hanging on it for fucking two years. Uh, hey man, I don't really play Warhammer more, anymore, but I still watch your videos. Always entertained to see a master at work his craft. Give it up. No, it's my pleasure. Thanks for super chat. Alright, we've got this. <laughs> they only go after your units.
remote in-house sound and same. Oh no, the voice actor that I spoke to said he did it from his own home. He did his um did his voice recording from his own house. So I was like, well, that's not what they told me. And it was just another lie. So it's fine, you know, it's just I don't I don't know why they did it so many times. Like, it would have been so easy just to say, hey, we don't want to do that. And I would have been fine with it. Like I say, that was not a really big deal at the time, but I remember hearing about it and I was like, it was like, it was a nail in the coffin. It was the first sign of, hey, I got lied to. I didn't like that. And then after that, I became way more cautious about trusting them. And I started spotting more lies all over the place. And then it just, it almost seemed like all, everything was lies. <laughs> because this is what I truly believe is that Creative Assembly brought me back into the program, not because they were fans of me, but because they wanted me to help promote Warhammer 3. Because, and once Warhammer 3 was, you know, out, they were done with me. So they told me whatever they felt like I needed to hear in order to get me on board and promote Warhammer 3, with no intention whatsoever of ever following through on any of it. Because they didn't, didn't follow through on any of it. So... Yeah, that that made me pretty angry with them. Felt pretty pretty manipulated. Feel like a bloody fool for trusting them. Take it from me. All right, let's go down to Sudenberg with Arkin. He should be fine to deal with this, no problems. Totally reasonable to not have content creators in the game. Why couldn't they just tell you that? Yeah, I would have been fine with it. If they had just said, no, we don't want content creators in the game, I would have been fine with it. I don't know why they had to lie. I love your content. May I ask what brand of headphones you're currently using? Cos. No. Uh, you probably can't see it very well. Blurry. Yeah, they're pretty good. Pretty good. They used to hurt my ears a little bit, but then my ears adjusted, and now they feel good. Uh, we need... No, there's no reinforcements coming, so this should be fine. We just need to get in there. I might try to bomb the... There's no safe spot to uh, launch the attack from there. And it's going to have high-powered high towers. Yes. Hmm. Well, he can heal, so just um, just make a move. Go the other way, go, the other way. go around this way. I think I can get through quicker. Why do you keep replaying Total War campaigns? Uh, what else can I do? What 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 do you recommend I do? There's retro headphones have a charm to them. Well, the reason why I went with these headphones as opposed to like a proper headset is because I was getting a headphone dint. I've actually I think my head is mostly recovered now. Um, I don't seem to have a headphone dint anymore. Dent in my in my skull. That was yeah when that. When I was like rubbing my head one day, I was, cause like I'm, I'm spoiler alert, I'm going bald. Um, I was looking at my head one day. I was like, oh fuck, I get a fucking headphone dent. This is shit. I'm, I'm gonna be bald soon, so that's gonna be really visible. It wasn't visible at all while I actually had hair, but it's becoming more and more visible. So I'm just like, shit, I need to stop wearing headphones. Cause I wear them for like friggin' ten hours a day, so naturally they, 
They, uh, they actually can make a dent into your skull, but this here, no dent, so it's good. Animus. No way it's actually real? Yeah, it's real. If I had a headphone dent, it's, it's mostly gone. It's still there a little bit, but it's mostly gone. The 1212 mod for Attila is pretty dang good. I should probably give that mod a shot, to be honest. I probably should give it a shot. When are we going to have Bald Legend? Uh, I reckon I've got about two years left before I have no choice but to just shave it all off. i got two years left. That's what I think. I reckon being partnered with CA accelerated it by a few years. <laughs> the amount of stress. Um... But yeah, I reckon I got about two years left. Well then, I'm gonna cap this so they spend some time trying to recap it because this uh, tower coming here. Did oh, we also need time for these guys to get over. Nah, they're fine. The liver mortis calls. Arkin moves. Have any surgeries? Nah, I'm just I'm okay with it. I'm just I'm just gonna let it happen and shave it all off pretty soon because it's it's it used to just be isolated at the back, but now you can see it's starting to come around the sides, and I'm also starting to recede at the front. Very soon, all of this will be gone for good. And then once that happens, I'm just gonna shave it all off. Legion forward. Not interested in like any sort of remedies. I'm just gonna let it happen and then just um yeah, just shave it off. Alternately, you could fly to Turkey, it's cheap there, but I don't care. I don't. You gotta understand, I just don't care about my hair. It seems like everybody else cares. I don't. I don't fucking care. I don't care what anyone else says. I don't. I don't care about it. There's nothing wrong with going bald. It's pretty normal. Hit <laughs> Cherry's just ball right through him. Can't move, move, move. Alright, that barricade there is easier to get through than this one. Alex Trubetskoy uh, did a HK100 super chat. Good legend. Create more drama around CA. Any PR is good PR, as you know, as a PR pro. All jokes aside, seems like a great PR move for CA to blacklist you to get more attention at this low point of theirs. All right, well, you, you got to keep in mind. Um, thanks for super chat. I. I don't think it was their intention to blacklist me right now. I don't think it was their intention to do it. Um, I think that this is not what they wanted. Um, I kind of forced their hands a little bit. Because... They were just being shit for so long. And I called them out on a bunch of stuff. And they were like, well, just leave then. Just leave. We're done with you. Just leave. And so I did. But the thing is, though, is that they've said that loads of times before. So they've said, just go. If you, if, if you don't, if you're not getting anything out of this, just go. 
And I was like, well, I'm going to give you a little bit more time. And I gave them months and just nothing improved at all. In fact, they got worse. So the timing of it is, is just very inconvenient for them. But it's not inconvenient for me. So I chose now to go. Because at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure that they realize that having me on board is better than not having me on board. Especially since the amount of effort that they put into the relationship was zero in the first place. So, like the amount of effort that Creative Assembly is putting into this now is the exact same amount that they've put in for the past two years. No effort. Um, except now it just makes them look bad. And I'm sure they're aware of it. But I think they were just sick of me constantly fighting them on every issue. But I feel like I had to. Okay. Yeah, because Grave Assembly didn't put any effort to try to keep me to stay at all. They're like, you can go now. Yeah, you can go, whatever. There's no effort to like, oh, but we want to really make this work. Or no, they, they didn't care. Warhammer 3 is out. We're done with you. Fuck off. Basically, that was the gist of it. We got what we wanted out of you. We're done. You ain't getting shit from us. Oh, well. I watched your stream earlier today. Are you still reading out bad jokes? Well, if they come in a super chat, sure. Why not? <laughs> nice see joke we got right there. Yeah, we warned them about it. What are you going to do? Oh, what does Legend of Total War know? Redact this, redact this feedback. What's this? Siege rework sucks. You can capture any settlement in the game using uh, single entities on horses. Redact. Get rid of that. That's bad feedback. That's not true. Just get rid of it. <laughs> I actually don't think I ever said that to them though but there was other stuff that I definitely um, told them about alright so let's occupy which is hilarious considering in the long run how many sales you probably ended up generating for CA yes but I, I can do that for them without being in the partner program and they're very much aware of that uh, being in the partner program should really be the partner program should be called perk program, right? That's what it really should be because you go in there and you get perks, right? And the kind of perks that you get depends on how much they like you. And since they didn't like me, I got no perks. So it was like I was in a perk program where there was no perks, and it felt it felt like shit. So I constantly fought them on it because here's the thing. From my point of view, a partner is where you communicate with mutual trust and actually tell them the truth and and work together. But that's not what it is. Not from my point of view. It wasn't a partnership. It was a perk program. It was a perk program for Creative Assembly where they got the perks of me promoting their shit and they got the perk of lying to me. Attend your king. They aren't even accepting new applications for the perk program. Yeah, the, uh, look, I'm not. I didn't really look into it, but honestly, if you're a creator right now, I think you're just starting up, and you're thinking about signing up with Creative Assembly, don't. Just do do my advice and just don't. Make your own way. Yeah, there are there are no creators that are truly benefiting from being attached to Creative Assembly right now. Maybe later down the track. For sure, you know, be an, keep an open mind. But right now, don't attach yourself to a company with that bad of a reputation. What if I sign up for early access? Well, it's, it's up to you. You, you do whatever you want. You do what you want. Don't just, uh, you know, that's just my advice. 
Team King. You know, you get early access and they put a muzzle on you. So it's up to you, if, if that's what you want. For some people it's fine, and that's not a problem, but uh, not, it wasn't fine with me. Okay, let's upgrade Lashiak again. Oh man, this is like the fourth time I've had to reconquer it. And we want to get... I want to capture Co... Oh, I don't want them getting wiped out though. Well, they, they already showed they just wanted to sack the settlement. Alright, how are we, how's Flakwa going? Oh, uh, they're only at war with us, so I'm expecting a counterattack. I don't think I should go down any further. I expect to lose Sudenberg. Actually, that's fairly useful. Can we recruit anything from that? Tomb Guard, alright. Yeah, look, these are experienced units, but I think I'd much rather get a Tomb Guard. Would you argue ultimately the partner program is a load of BS because it seems that way? It depends. It really depends on who you are. Some people get a lot of benefit out of the partner program. I'm not going to deny that. Some people definitely do. But I personally didn't. And the vast majority of you probably won't. Yeah. Uh, there, there's, there's favoritism that happens within the partner program. That's absolutely the case. And it's usually the biggest ass kisses that um, that get the favoritism. Nothing wrong with that, but it's just it's it's a it's very much a a buddy system. It's whatever. I just wish they had been honest about it. That's all. All right, we've got these over here, so we can get a fair few more archers. All right, let's let's merge some of these guys here because we're pretty badly damaged, and this would help speed up our recovery a little bit. I screwed up. Ah, oh, damn it. Screwed up again. Yeah, I don't want to put experienced units into non-experienced units. It's too late now. All of all of them are ex not experienced. Um, I'll just have to merge one of these other ones. Arise, legions. That'll do. Put four of them in. That'd be good. Could you give examples? No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm not going to give examples. No. No, I don't want to start shit. Alright, I think I'm done here. Let's move on to the next turn. It's kind of difficult when playing Tomb Kings. you got settlements, stuff that you can build, but you don't make enough money to really justify building all the time, especially in this sort of situation where we're going to um, probably lose settlements all the time. Alright, we've got construction going, uh, recruiting going on over there. And the next army is a little while away. But we're getting there, we're getting there. Let's move on. Lawmaster Sotek was pretty critical on Shadows of Change. Definitely not an ass kisser. Mm, he was very critical of, of Shadows of Change, for sure. Yep. But he is definitely one of their favoured creators, for sure. Yeah, he's got a very good relationship with Creative Assembly. I've never had anywhere even close to the level of, of uh, connections that he's got within Creative Assembly. Not even close. Good, their war finally ended. Uh, I didn't expect to be able to hold the settlement, but at least their war has ended. That'll make it easier to deal with them. Alright, just sacked it. No big deal. Oh, no, he didn't just sack it. He occupied it. Alright, that's fine. Honestly, it's easier to take it back. 
than to defend them out in the field, because at least there's a position that we can actually attack now. Okay, let's see here. So what is a good way to deal with an army with several strong single entity units like dragons as vampire counts? You just, okay, yeah, single entities are one of the most annoying units in the game to deal with because they have so few weaknesses. Basically, you just have to have a stronger army. Especially playing as vampire counts because you don't have missile units. Missile units are best at dealing with big monsters like dragons. So, the... The, um... If your enemy has a dragon, you kind of need to bring two terror guys, or you need to bring some heroes. What else can you do? A grave guard aren't going to beat them. Um, your monsters on the ground aren't going to beat them. So, you can bring two armies to defeat their one. That's kind of how you go about it. An ecumenical matter to the $30 Super Chat Legend 7 Union Zone Disaster Campaign is actual premium content. Thanks for the multiple streams. Do you think Clan Pestilence should get a proper Plague Cauldron mechanic? No. No. No, too many people have the Plague Cauldron mechanic. So, no. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> they should get something for themselves, for sure. Just not the Plague Cauldron. That's already been used too many times. But thanks for the chat. Agreed. This is my order. Belly, scaly spam versus single entities. Yeah, it's not ideal, but it does work. It definitely does work. King of tombs. Calls. How are monstrous units when fighting single entities? Vargas against dragons. Vargeists are not great against dragons. They're not anti-large. And as they continue to lose entities, they'll start dishing out less and less damage. If you can manage to get the Vargeist unit to wrap around the dragon, which can be difficult to do, then it, it should do a decent amount of dragon, depending on the type of dragon that's going up against. But for the most part, if you're playing on very hard battle difficulty, um, I would not send a Vargeist to go fight dragons. Unless you're using loads of Vargeist. Yeah, you, you kind of need to isolate them. You need to use tactics. Isolate the dragon and, and overwhelm it and kill it. Uh, but if you fight the entire army all at once, you're probably going to have a hard time. Mm, these guys here really want to wipe them out. It is forbidden. Okay. If we use two armies to take out... Oh, that's, that's fairly dangerous. Let's have a look at his spells. Alright, he doesn't have Foot of Gork. Oh, he does have Foot of Gork. <laughs> so that's, that's a problem. He's got a lot of Winds of Magic. Our army's damaged. Gork and heaven! Reasonable amount of large units. Doesn't seem to have shitloads of physical resistance on them yet. Oh my god, Savage Orcs, holy shit. Forty five percent physical resistance. Fuck hell. These two armies would probably lose against Wurzag. On their own. Hang on, I've got some more regiments of renown. He's got magical attacks. Those will be good. These are magical attacks. Those will be good. And they got magical attacks. Okay. Yeah, we're going to need that. And then let's merge some of these troops. What? And... Hmm. 
And we also don't have a wizard. Ooh. That reminds me, don't I have... Oh, yeah, 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 I've got Nebetha, Prince. Yeah, that dude. Yeah, I cheesed it a little while back. Um, that guy's really bloody strong. I should put him in Arkan's army, I think. Depending on where we go. Uh, Zeroic the Tank did a $10 super chat. Just wanted to show you some love. Continue being a voice of reason for the community. Your platform has helped more than you realize. All right, I appreciate that. Thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, I do the best I can. I know I fall short sometimes, but I do the best I can. Force march and ambush since that's work though. Mm, his army is not vulnerable to being ambushed. It's not going to do much. Like fighting him just on the field compared to ambushing him, it's just, it isn't going to make much of a difference. Because you need both of your armies fighting together. And when you ambush them, only one of your armies is going to be there at the start. So it just isn't going to matter. It does look like he's going for Kofa first. My dynasty. Hmm. Alright, let's move to here. Which is just within his range, right? We got... 38 units. Let's see if he gives it a shot. Let's see what he does. Okay, we got these. Oh yeah, they take two turns to recruit. Um, no, I get archers. Oh, I know. No, 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 no. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's actually use ambush dance. Alright, let's give this guy one unit. Hang on. I'm going to put this army here in ambush dance, just a little bit closer. Yeah, so I, I will use an ambush. Let's try to see if we can get him to come at us. But not because I'm specifically trying to ambush him. I'm just trying to trick him into it, making an attack, and we'll see if we can manage it. So this guy here can get hit by Wurzag if I stand right there. Yeah, it's right on the edge of his movement. So at the very least, if I don't like the way the odds show up, we can just back off. And then have this one here recruit three units. And if it gets cancelled, no big deal. At least we'll get some replenishment of the intern. Uh, Greshan Rozinski did a 25 PLN Super Chat. Hello, Legend. How's campaign going? Couldn't see previous parts, so actually don't know what went wrong and how bad it is. Uh, things have improved. So at the beginning of the stream, I pretty much only had my starting area. And there was, we were just swamped with enemies. And most of those enemies have been pushed back now. Because we've got more armies, so things are much better off. It wasn't really a disaster campaign, not really. But people called it a disaster campaign at the end of the previous episode. Hmm. I definitely want to go and capture Zandri, but I don't want Wurzag to force march over here and smash us. So what I might do is go into ambush stance out here, and let's just try to trick them into advancing this way. Yeah, you stay about there. Arkan, I didn't really want to finish off um, the Cult of Sigma right now because it's not not our top priority. So let's just bring him back to the Black Tower of Arkan for now. And our top priority needs to be kicking Wozag out of here. Yeah, that's our top priority. Scorpions and equipment would help. The scorpions take too long to recruit. We'll get the scorpions later. Parentis Dubois did a two euro super chat. Just some support to say 100% agree with Zeroic. Okay, no worries, dude. Appreciate that super chat. 
I always appreciate that. XCA employee here can confirm this is a disaster campaign. Yeah, you get a lot of people saying they're XCA employees. Some of them seem like they're more legit than others, but it's it's really hard to say if any of them actually are. Unfortunately, when you have like shitloads of people saying that they're XCA employees, it makes the other ones that probably are seem less credible. Uh, let's. I would like to get some more armies. But, you know, 13 turns takes a bit. We're, we're at 97% research rates. We're almost at 100 again. Uh, another Necrotect would be good. So they help us campaign movement range. Because it's going to take a little while before we get enough on this regard as well. I know that'll help a bit. A bit. Okay, let's move on. Alright, yeah, so we're trying to set up some traps for Wurzag. But yeah, we gotta kick him out of here. Could you scout to see what the lizards are up to? I'd be overextending myself if I went down that way, and early game lizards are kind of... It's not really early game anymore, it's mid game lizards. I imagine that would be a very difficult enemy to deal with, and if they're... <laughs> mm, I may have to fight them. Luther, 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 Luther. Fuckhead. Why does these books of Nagash thing look like it's a weird mod? Costs are up, dude. Yeah, it's just like it's vanilla. There's no mods attached. Uh, it's just a. I don't know. UI scaling issue, I think, maybe. I'm not sure. Alright, they're going for it. They're going for it. And the ambush... fails. But, more importantly, order resolve win. Nice. Honestly, I'm surprised the order resolve was that good. Oh, nice. That army got smashed. They don't see us here. Come on down, come on down. Alright, we'll smash that. Uh, they'll get a lot of replenishment though. Doesn't matter, we'll still smash it. Two armies versus one, we got them. I find your presence insufferable. How do you not have the white dot? Because I don't have any mods attached. The white dot shows up on mods. No. We, we haven't... Yeah, no, we're good. We declared one, everyone. What graphical settings are you playing on Legend? Sorry. It looks like low. Uh, it's. Uh, I'll just show you. It's, some of the settings are on fairly low. Um, like my, my computer can run it on reasonably high settings, but I can't run it and also stream on high settings. That was the problem that I was facing. So texture qualities are high, anti-aliasing off, shadows pretty much off. Uh, this is optimized so that we don't get massive amounts of dropped frames during streams and videos because it was, it was a real problem for a while. But yeah, if I'm not streaming, I can turn the graphical options up because I don't have to worry about frame drops. But yeah, with streaming, massive frame drops happen. Oh, both of these guys got pulled out. Mm. All right, I didn't really think I was going to be able to keep Sudenberg, but I was kind of hoping they wouldn't come here this quickly. Uh, 
we need to go deal with Luther Harkon right away. I don't imagine that this is going to be too dangerous, but then it, rank 25. Shit. Okay. Alright, you make your way to here, and you make your way to here. Get that replenishment. This smells fishy. And then over here. Yeah, that recovered a fair bit. That was way more damaged. But yeah, we should be able to go for it. We're at full strength. Oh, no. That's fine. Take this one out. I'll probably run away. Yeah. But that just pulled them out of encamp stance, so that's fine. We've got to be careful close to those beastmen, though. Then again, that army is pathetic. Even if it ambushed us, we'd probably be able to beat it. Remember the disaster battle against Luther? Luther alone in half your missiles? Was that in Warhammer 2? Because, yeah, I, if I remember correctly, that was Sisters of Avalon versus Luther Harkon. But that was when magical attacks were blocked by magic resistance, so that wouldn't happen in Warhammer 3. Arise, my legions. Rise. Unleash these slaves. You got a talisman of preservation last turn, Legend? Right. Right, okay. That's good, I guess. Oh, this guy here needs to go back on his his other mount. You're right, there's one. Stick it on Ark in the Black. Because I believe... Yeah, okay, that's good. What Arcan, Arcane item should we give him? <laughs> Arcan item. Hmm. Cetra's coming over here to Black Tower of Arcan, and... His armies are not to be trifled with. There's, uh, that's not nothing. I alone shall restore Look, if he captures Black Tower of Arkan, I'll just recapture it. The fact that it's tier 2 is not that big of a deal. It's easy to get it back up to there. But I need to move these guys back over here, and we want to capture Zandri. Yeah, so send him over here. It'll be an easy order resolve. And hopefully this guy will just run away. Can you save scum flesh laboratory instabilities? Or is it predetermined? Yes, you can save scum that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had somebody sent in a, a um, Molder army where it was like nine mutations with no instabilities. They safe scummed it. It said he said it took it like a hundred hours to do that though. Your Which oh my god, I, I don't know. It's longer than an entire campaign just sitting there safe scumming. That being said, that's probably about the amount of time it took me to bloody do the one turn. Um, Blitz is just always in load screens, constantly quick saving and quick loading. Alright. Cool, cool, cool. This is the, pretty much the largest extent that we've been so far. And our research rate is now at 98%. That's good-ish. Uh, another Lich Priest would be good, if nothing else, for scouting. Don't want to scout too far out. Okay. Legions rise. On your knees. On a scale from one to ten, how fucked is this campaign? Pretty much a one now. As in, it's not fucked at all. Because my strength ranking is eleven, which is pretty high. I've got a decent amount of territory. And yeah, we're going to keep losing settlements here and there, but as long as they keep getting new armies, that's all that really matters. And we get that by keep on beating Rapance. 
Finishing off at some point though would probably be a good idea. And my characters keep getting stronger. My armies are getting there. So the chances of me actually losing this campaign is getting pretty close to zero. It's getting pretty close to zero. But you never know, sometimes a disaster can happen. You know, once we got rid of that rogue army, rogue faction, that really made a big difference. Okay, let's move on. Commandment available over here, although I don't think it'll last the turn. Let's get rid of this. Just don't bother building in an unstable area. If we have a look here... Could upgrade this, but money... I think there's better things that we can spend money on. Alright, let's move on. Another Lizardman army out and say, yeah, I saw it, but it was only small. If you don't do anything to call the RNG seed, you'll keep getting the same result? Yeah, of course. Well, that's the point of what's why it's called save scumming. You have to save it and then load it, and it resets the, uh, the seed. Yeah, we knew that we weren't going to be able to beat this. What's been your this is uh, your favorite this is Total War campaign so far? I've always enjoyed the Ica Claw. This is Total War is the best, especially the uh, the one we did for Warhammer Two. That was that was definitely the most fun. Yeah, we knew they were coming, and if he occupies it, it's his funeral. His funeral. Seven pterodons, not good. Yeah, we, we struggled to deal with pterodons, but it's, it's fine, we'll manage it. Alright, Luther is... Well, at least we can attack him. He must be pretty confident that we won't. So he must have a pretty strong army. Yeah, that's it. You run back across that river, you fuckface. really love to be able to win this but we are outnumbered by four units their archers are not quite as good as ours their wizard here uh, shit could I actually win that it's giving me some hope because of valiant defeat but I reckon it's right on the cusp of close defeat I don't think I would actually win that But it would be it would be so good to try and actually, if we can manage it. I'm going to give it a shot. I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose. You know, we're outnumbered by four units. Their units are about the same quality as ours. We're out. We just have limited options. But you never know. You never know. Sometimes you can pull off a good win with these. Winnable? Eh. It, it doesn't feel winnable to me. Just because it says Valiant Defeat, our options are limited. Our army is tactically impotent. You know, if I had a single entity, that'd be okay. Don't forget, this guy's got beast magic. He's going to do, be using Flock of Doom all the time. It's, it's going to be difficult to overcome that. They've got a lot of advantages here. Can at least take out some units. Yes, taking out units against beastmen. 
<laughs> they just replace him straight away. I'll do the best I can, but I don't think I'm going to win. But sometimes you just got to give it a shot anyway. I don't like to give up. But I'm not feeling it for this one. So, in terms of a defensive position, we really want to make sure that the doggos don't friggin' smash us. That one, that position there... Yeah, that's probably the best we're going to hope for. We need to corner camp. Because... We can route their units. Our guys won't route, but we can route theirs. I'm going to create gaps in my line a little bit, and also important to have some reserves. But use square formations so that if they use Flock of Doom, hopefully it only hits one unit rather than multiple. <coughs> I'm going to have to route that enemy lord. I'm not going to be able to kill him properly. Keep a unit in reserve. And yeah, we want to make sure that we're not fighting in melee that much. We might be able to get a Realm of Souls with Sharp T. That would definitely help a fair bit. And the unit that we need to deal with the, f uh, the most urgently is their Ungor Raiders. On Skyrim from one to half hours this campaign, one turn later with four settlements lost. Yeah, but they're all recently captured settlements. You're only looking at it from one point of view. Our armies are not being defeated. Losing these settlements weren't they weren't worth anything either. And if we capture four settlements one turn and then lose four settlements, we're not we're not really losing. Okay, get back. Okay, there it is. Go for the Ungor Raiders. I'm fucking trying to dodge. Yeah, I really don't think we're going to win this. Like, really don't think. Like, they're killing us too quickly. Like, look how quickly we're getting slaughtered here. Without a leadership unit keeping our skeletons in line, they just can't hold. Maybe if it was on normal battle difficulty, but on this difficulty, nah, no chance. Really don't think it, it's gonna happen. Okay, good, we got that one off the battlefield. Now we need to get this. Actually, don't worry about that one, it's not doing that much damage. Go for, go for over here, which is, it's gonna overrun us really soon. Honestly, that one leaving the battlefield, that really did help. So that that's good. Mm, maybe maybe there's a little bit of hope. Problem is that melee infantry are so fucking useless. Hey, army for me over here. Okay, I've got to shoot at those Ungor Raiders. They're causing me problems. i got to get rid of them. No, shut up! I told you... <laughs> Tell me I'm losing ground. It's broken. This is where we're struggling the most. Ah. 
I would have put it behind them to flank them, but I need, to, need them to hold the enemy back. Because, yeah, this is going to fall any second now. Was impossible. was impossible. I did the best I could, but I don't think it was possible. I look how much damage this guy here did. But he wasn't able to overcome that. The archers did the best that they could, but our melee infantry just can't hold them back. They're too weak. This doesn't last long enough. Come on. If we could just route these friggin' units. I just can't. I got nothing left. Still winnable? It was not winnable. See, there's the army losses. It was not winnable. Probably should have auto-resolved it, because we would have done more damage to them. Because most of them just ran away. Yeah, if it was on, like, normal battle difficulty, it would have been vastly different, because we wouldn't have suffered from a leadership penalty, and we would have been able to route them, but on very hard battle difficulty, at the, at the lower tier of these units, they fight a lot longer. So it, w it just wasn't able to overcome that. It was worth a shot. We didn't lose much from it, but... Yeah. Very hard battle difficulty makes a big difference in this kind of battle. Later on in the campaign, when you're using elite units, very hard battle difficulty is not that big of a deal, but right now it definitely is. Ooh. Oh. I thought they'd stay close by here so they could reinforce if we attacked Al Haik, That would have been good. I need to get rid of these damn beastmen. Although, now we might be able to use... Oh no, it's 12 turns before we can use that. It's fine. Okay. So, with Luther Harkon here... And he came with a damaged army as well. Okay. This king of greatest dynasty. Find my harem. They challenge me! Okay, <laughs> I'll take that order resolve. That's, that's pretty good. Every time when they say they can't do anything, modders do it in one day. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I know. It's it's the same old story that we've heard a hundred times before. You know, bullshit that comes out of the CA studio. Submit to your king. What what can you do about it? You can it's just it's an endless goddamn battle, isn't it? Hang on, before I do that, I just want to see what level these characters are, because I'm hoping that they're gonna get killed. Not this time. Oh, I can't tell. King of Tombs. That's good, taking out Luther Harkon. He usually shows up about once every, say, 15 turns, so we'll see him again a bit later. Every time he comes, he comes with uh, much better armies. But at least he brings a few gifts for us. At least we weren't under too much pressure, so we were able to manage that quite easily. Kill that that beastman. This guy here might be able to do it. If we capture Al Haik first, you get free movement through Al Haik. He might just be able to reach it. 
Rapunzel will be coming back fairly soon. If we have a look at this, it's probably recruiting mostly um, Knights Errant. But I did say that I want to punish uh, uh, Cetra. Because this is... Let's see, he's on horseback. A lot of horses. You've also got Manfred heading over to El Calabad. Hmm. As much as I really want to kick these guys out of here, I can't be everywhere at once. I think we should go after Cetra, because this is a low value win. This is a high value win. I don't think I need all three armies. I guess this guy here could capture Al Haik and that's be fine. Two armies should be sufficient for capturing Black Tower of Arkham. Alright, let's do it. Ooh, close defeat. Okay, looking at the map here, what are we dealing with? It's a Tomb King settlement, they're all the same. But should I contr not control large armies? Hmm. Yeah, because obviously we don't want to actually fight a battle here. As if we want to fight a battle. What we want to do here is just cap all the points. The problem here is that their fast units will pin us down. I still think I can do it. It's a bit of a risk, but I still think I can do it. Don't control large army. I think I can do it that way. You have a Tomb Prince available? Yes, I keep forgetting about that. Thanks for reminding me. I need to recruit it here this turn. They're not going to be coming in at the start. Oh, nice. It's already damaged. That's good. That gives us a way in. I need to wait for my reinforcements. I know I said not control large armies, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to withdraw enough units so that these guys can come in. I maybe should have put that lord on a horse. But then again, they, they, don't, they don't have many archers, so this shouldn't really matter. Uh, which units should we withdraw? Uh, I really don't think I'm going to use the Crypt Ghouls. We've got plenty of magic. Let's send Arkan over here and let's snipe Cetra. Because if they bring in another unit, that's fine. As long as it's not Cetra. I don't really care. Okay, here are our guys. Cool. Definitely seems like most of their defenses are over here, and you can... They've just given up this position for some reason. Okay, good. This is our opportunity. We come in through here, and we just... We do the best we can. Um, is this guy immortal? No. Is he on foot? No, he's on horseback. Okay. This guy might struggle to keep up, though. Here we go.
Because, yeah, the great thing about doing th it this way is that when their units come in as reinforcements, <laughs> they're going to instantly get killed because we won the battle this way. It's going to be... I, I, actually, I don't think I've ever done this with the Tomb Kings, against the Tomb Kings like this. No sneaking for capture points. I find that that doesn't work so well in Warhammer 3. And especially in this map here. Sneaking to get up there is very difficult. There's too many ways of them detecting you. Like, Warhammer... Like, it used to work really well for sneaking, but I have found it to be less effective these days. They have actually patched to try to uh, protect against sneaking. What they haven't patched is this particular technique. Short-sided. All right, don't go that way. Go around. Go around. There's another way up through here. They're just trying to pin us down for the other guys to get here. And by the way, and the, it actually succeeded. They pinned us down. We got. We got to have to fight there. This guy here is struggling a bit. Try to pull out of that now. Yeah, with all of these large units that are relatively fast, it does make it difficult to uh, uh, to do this. It's not an easy situation. Because if it's all just infantry, it's super easy, but the larger units, it's so easy. They're doing a better job of responding to us. Than previous armies that we've dealt with. Onwards, minions. And there's Cetra. Luckily, Cetra is only on horseback, not that big of a deal. Let's spirit leech him. Now, Cetra on his own is not going to have much holding power, but I really don't know what other units are coming down this way. Cetra is a pretty heavy hitter, but we should be able to outrun him. So just. Just run right through him. <laughs> Cetra's like, don't you dare ignore me. Yeah, I, I, no, I don't want to. I don't want to. No, sorry, Cetra. No. Yep, okay, well, they've blocked us off down here. All right, we need to get out of here. We need to get out. This is this is we're getting trapped. This may have backfired. We need to get out of this position. There's too many fucking chariots blocking us off. Let's go down this way. Finish this one off here. Oh shit! Such a really smash that one. Would do that, but Spirit Leech is way more cost effective for us right now. Okay, we've almost gotten rid of Cetra. If we get rid of all their large units, this won't be too difficult. Because, yeah, they just block our path really easily. This is not anti-large, so we should be able to handle that without too much difficulty. This guy's struggling a bit against Cetra. Cetra's anti-large, so you know, naturally difficult enemy to deal with. Is he magical attacks? Yeah, he does. Tomb Scorpion went down really easily. Of 
Alright, Cetra's down, and that's good, but it's definitely not enough. Uh, we're gonna have to take out this unit here. I can't just run right through it. Not a servant. At least we still got a bit of regen left in us, so we can still get back up to full health. Good, taking out those Ushabti, they're no big deal in melee. They are starting to bring in units from here. Uh, Valentin Ionut did a. 25 RON Super Chat. Hey there, Legend. I remember buying Wormer 2 and learnt most of the basics from your Ikic Claw campaign. Terrible campaign. Thank you for all the great content. No, it's been my pleasure. Thank you for Super Chat. Alright, let's pop this down. Yeah, everyone get in there. Make sure we get those heals. Although he's the one that needs it the most. Alright, I gotta punch up through here. Yeah, they're, oh, they're bringing in reinforcements from this location. Yeah. Send in the hex rates. Uh, that's actually a pretty good idea. I'll do that actually. Good thinking. shall pay. Nix Assassin did a two euro super chat for the new computer. Hi from Italy. All right, no worries, dude. I could download more RAM with that. Appreciate it. Oh, those are not something that we want to fight. No, 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 that's, we don't want to fight them. But I'm kind of stuck. I might have to. Yeah, I'm going to have to fight them. Luckily, they're not the anti-large variant. They're just the armor-piercing. Oh, they dish out damage. Pull my neck protect. I may have made a mistake by doing this. Okay, I need to pop this down. We'll debuff them all. right here right now not gonna lie feeling a little bit worried that I have a bit enough more that I can chew with this they're really pinning us down with a lot of anti-large here and you gotta get rid of this necropolis I gotta find a way to push out of this they're blocking us off as well my poor shit wizard it's okay Oh, that's a lot of shit in here. Death awaits. Mm, you know, they're, they're, actually, they're, mm, I'm just a little bit worried. It just seems like a lot of units, that's all. This will help a bit. They shall perish. Arkham the Black. Pull that one back. Doesn't look too bad. Yeah, but I'm pinned down, and our guys are not the greatest fighters ever. Being pinned down can be worrisome sometimes. Hmm. Now they're actually handling it quite well. Yeah. Yeah, take out those chariots, it's good. Yeah, this is actually going a lot better than I thought, here. Yeah, look at that, they're taking them all out. Definitely helped that we took out Cetra, that is a big deal. This guy here is almost at his max... No, he is at his max regen. The Necropolis Knights... Yeah, okay. Calls. 
Still got plenty of magic reserves, so that's all good. They still got reinforcements coming from here. Good, our hex race have done a decent job. Yeah, it was a good call bringing them in. Dude. Okay, most of the the large units are gone. I gotta take them all out because I just can't pull out while they're keeping us here. Yeah, Tomb Guard didn't do that much damage either. Mm, maybe I'm panicking over nothing. This one over here. Don't worry about their infantry. Just go after the large stuff. Once all the large stuff is gone, we got free reign in the battles. Right, they just did the Sharpty summon. Try to ignore them if possible because they only last about a minute. Fucking Necrotect, come on. Need to get this guy out of combat. He's not immortal yet. So I got a little bit more healing I can do, just a bit. Okay, there goes the chariots. Keep running forward, run forward. That's it. Let's go around this way here. No, go around this way. I want to cap this, get rid of these towers and barricades. There's too many of them. Go this way. Let's send this one back around here, see if we can cap that. Oh no, 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 not you! God damn it, why are you always stuck? <laughs> Shit, I need to get this guy off the battlefield or something. Okay, that's good. Go around this way. I think I might pull this guy out of the settlement, if I can get him out of there. We don't need to fight that. Don't need to fight that. Let's go. Try to punch through that. Okay, this one here, I need to get it out of here. Careful. This guy is at least immortal, so him dying is not that big of a deal. I'd rather he didn't, though. Ready. Wind. Arkham the Black. Arkham moves. Oh, the obstructions. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Alright, the two Necrotex. These two here. I need to get them off the battlefield. Uh, this guy here should also leave. Alright, let's use these. Yeah, it wasn't so easy to uh, to cap this one, for sure. Hmm. Just keep them there. Just look for easy points. If there's anywhere that there's actual troops, avoid them. Oh god, these artillery really get in my way. Pull them through there. I move. Sion of Nehekara. Rise, my statues. 
animus. Forward. Proceed. Legion. Okay, looks like we got a relatively free reign up this way now. These ones are dishing out damage to us, but don't seem to be doing very much. No, they are actually doing a fair bit. Still a fair bit of reinforcements to come in. This is okay. My will be done. Hmm, I didn't do anything. Why doesn't Resurrect heal Hex Wraiths? Um, it does. It, it heals them, it doesn't revive them from death though. You need to use a different ability for that. Yeah, try to cap points to get them to... ...counter-attack, so that they leave the main points undefended. Probably not going to be able to hold it for very long, but we, you know, get some victory tickets. That's better than nothing. This guy here seems to be moving real slow. Yes. Okay, get these guys out of the city, move back around over this way, maybe come around this way. Take out these guys, they've actually done a fair bit of damage to us. Forward. Yes. Uh, Jocilota became a new member. Alright, thanks dude, appreciate the support. Alright, so like I said, we weren't going to get a whole bunch of victory tickets out of that, but... Even just getting a couple is better than nothing. Because we don't ever lose them. And since that's mostly infantry here now, it's a lot easier to deal with them. They're, they're still dicking around, they don't properly capture this stuff. But actually, we could, we could take this out and try to hold on to this. Because they're only weak units, and I don't think they've got any more reinforcements coming here, it's all coming from this way. Yep. Okay, it's working. It's working. Because we've got other points capped. See, they're, they're not sure what to do. I think we got this. I think we got it. Whew, I was worried there for a second, that's for sure. I wasn't worried about losing the battles. I was worried about, um, what, what happened here? Oh, what the fuck is this shit? One last little fuck you off before we won the battle. I'd be curious to see how many of these units come in. Because they should just come in and get instantly destroyed. Right? No, they don't come in. Uh, so that we didn't completely wipe them out, but we should have enough left over to, um, to finish them off. I wonder how CA imagines sieges should be played, like, if the people from CA, if they play the game at all, actually assault the walls or something. Oh, yeah, they... Oh. Um, they definitely don't cheese. That's for sure. 
Like they would never fight that that way. Um, yeah, I don't know. You'd be surprised how many people fight the walls. Yeah, a lot. A lot. I don't know why you would. You don't need to. End up taking ridiculous casualties for nothing. Maybe I should have wiped out a few more units to allow them to come in. But it's going to be fine because we can just take them out with this other army. The Notif... Vacated. Became a member for 22 months. Just want to say thank you for everything you do. No worries, dude. My pleasure. Thank you for the super chat. I right, just wanted that. Ah, uh, not super chat. Membership. Sorry, I'm getting tired. I think that's all we can do. Oh, no, no. I was going to attack Al Hayek with this one. But yeah, that'll be super easy because Wurzag's garrison is absolute garbage. Alright, but what we want to do here is take him off the the, um, the chariot, because the chariots will get shot by these guys, whereas a horse won't. So it'll actually be easier on horseback. Fight unoptimally for the spectacle. For many, that's what the game is about. Yeah, absolutely. But the thing is, I've already done that with this game, fought unoptimally. So the spectacle sort of wore off on me. So now I I got to get efficiency out of it. To a degree. I mean, there's, there's some efficiency that's just too tedious to worry about. Like, for example, um, selling your, like, shit items. Uh, who cares? You get, like, a couple hundred gold out of it. Just don't care. Or... Um, for another example of real sort of tedious cheese is for those factions that can get here uh, the um, the student follower like turning off your research every single time you fight a battle that's tedious for very little gain but something like using two characters to take out an entire army yeah that's that's something I'm willing to do Rowan Kingdon, $8 super chat. Uh, cheers for being a legend in and out of the game, mate. Always love the content. No, Zoo, my pleasure. Thank you for the super chat. At least this one isn't going to take 10 minutes. This will this will be done very quickly. I'm not even going to bother with this one. Just go straight over here. They haven't even reacted to it yet. There's too few units on the battlefield. Alright, this one's... I was wondering why it was lagging behind. It's because this is fleet-footed. There's a big difference in speed.
My friend who likes to just send his units and watch them fight also find sieges battles annoying as hell. Yeah. Well, that's... Yeah, there's no two ways about it. The sieges are just really poorly designed. But at least this way, you just get over them really quickly. Just get it done. Why aren't they doing anything to stop me? There's nothing they can do. They're too slow. They've only got six units. What are they going to do? <laughs> they don't have time for this. <laughs> so a light wizard is pretty good for doing this kind of shit. Close victory, huh? Alright. I don't even know why I'm bothering upgrading it. This is this is how many times have I lost this bloody settlement? Am I actually gonna hold on to it this time? Probably not. Don't even bother repairing that, it's not worth it. I'm just I just keep losing it over and over again. Yes. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. Everything is looking okay there. Nothing else I can do anyway. It's good these guys get a bit stronger. Yep, that's good, and every bit of research rate counts. Good. So we're now sitting on 97%. We must have lost some more territory. Need to get that repance trade again. Well, we've just sorted all those, so that's good. 13 turns left on this, but the base time at the moment is 16. Well, if we could get 3% could more, we'd probably knock a turn off that. I think that uh, Rapant should be coming back soon. This is Total War is probably the most lore-friendly way for Arkhan. Fair enough. We're starting to get control of the situation. Fair bit, I think. Getting there. Because, yeah, at the beginning of the stream, all I had was these settlements, and there was a lot of enemies, and... There's still a lot of enemies, but we've expanded out a fair bit, and we've got more armies. The more armies we get, the more we can expand. And we've got some high-tier armies now, or high-tier lords, and that makes a big difference. Because even if they get defeated in battle, they get to come back, and you can... The more of them you have, the more... Um... Let me try to explain this. If you've got loads of these, like, rank 20 lords sitting in your reserve pool, anytime an emergency shows up or you end up getting an army wipe, just bring back another good lord and that can handle it really quickly. Especially if they've also got access to resurrect. Okay, let's move on. Is this live? No, this is pre-recorded, dude. You're watching a VOD. 
What kind of disaster battle submissions make for an interesting video? Like what faction scenarios? Um, it really depends. It, it comes down to this. Can I make a good thumbnail and title out of it? If I can't, then it's not a good video. So, f as an example, battles that have like shitloads of variety, those are really difficult to get good thumbnails and titles on because if I put in variety as a title, nobody clicks on it. Nobody cares. You'd, you'd think that they would, but they don't. So, usually it's scenarios that are uncommon where there is one specific problem in the battle that is very difficult to overcome, or we have a trick in the army that we could do. So, for example, if we've got an army that just doesn't have anything special about it, so, for example, um, settlement garrisons, they tend to perform really badly in, um, in the algorithm because people are just like, oh, it's just a settlement battle, I don't care, sort of thing. So, every, every situation I have to... Um, assess it and I usually you know have a look at the situation look at the army compositions go into the battle look at the map and then go okay can I make a thumbnail out of this and if I can't then nah, I don't make the video people watch the stream and not the thumbnail well I wish that that was the case but it is absolutely not the case look when it comes to streaming it, yeah it's fine all the streams more or less perform pretty similarly. It depends on the faction that I play. But when it comes to disaster battles, the thumbnail and the title is actually more important than the actual content itself. It's I hate that. I wish I could just go disaster battle hashtag 456. I wish I could just do that, but that is not what works. If I start doing that, they'll they'll tank in views. You know, I've been doing this for a really long time, so I've tried a whole bunch of different things and. You have to constantly adapt, like, you can't cover the same situation twice in a close proximity. Um, Doomstacks don't do very well these days, depending on the Doomstack. If it's an interesting Doomstack, like something that you wouldn't think of, then yeah, you can maybe get away with it. But if it's like, hey look, 20 Necrofex Colossus, no, no one's gonna buy that. Oh look, here's, rate my Doomstack legend, it's 20 um, Sisters of Avalon. People have already seen that, they don't, they don't care, they don't care. So it's, oh, I forgot to get the hero again. I'm really tired. Well, once again, Manfred <laughs> sacks the settlement and then proceeds to go get absolutely killed. Both of our armies able to catch him. Basic uh, bitch ass army. This is my I don't know why he bothers. Just use soy face thumbnails in zero context? No, that's... no, it doesn't work. Yeah. Alright, let's get the Tomb Prince from here. It looks like this army might hit El Calabad. Can we go into Ambush Dance? No, I'm going to Tannin Dance though. Oh, this one can go into Ambush Dance. And then... Hopefully he doesn't get wounded, but we want to recruit this one here. Cost me 700, but here's what I did. So this is the the Tomb Prince that Cetra starts off with. And he always has this trait here, Captain of the Royal Chariot Guard. But the trait that he has is random. So you've got melee attack and melee defense plus 8 while on a skeleton chariot, which has done the same thing here. So you get 16 uh, it basically doubles his bonuses. So, that makes him stupidly strong. That means, compared to this guy here, with the exact same equipment at the exact same level, he would have 16 extra points of melee attack and 16 extra points of melee defense. <coughs> Which, for a chariot, is fucking lots. Absolutely lots. Alright, what's coming in over here? That's pretty dangerous. Yeah, it's from Pants again. Servants. Oh shit, I wasn't expecting them to come back this soon. Alright, well, what we're gonna have to do here is uh, go into ambush dance, try to lure them in, because I can't quite reach them Yeah. And just, yeah, just hit him again. Tend 
your king, slaves. Alright, I can't stay in the settlement here, I think. Um, since they're out on the water, let me just see if this works. Oh shit, we win. In order resolve. How about that? Uh, it costs us a fair few units though, but in all honesty, that feels pretty fair. Like, pretty, like, good for us, that is. Um, I'm gonna take that. Because I feel like if I fight that manually, th those trolls would smash me. Yeah, pretty badly damaged. We'll need some time to recover after that. Alright. Oh, luckily our recruit... Oh yeah, because this one here um, has recruit rank plus two in the Lord's Army. So that's good. We'll recover reasonably quickly. Reasonably quickly. This one's immortal now, so that's good. Are you ever going to make a video about Radius mod pack? Probably not. Probably not. Do you think CA will still invest Pharaoh? In invest in Pharaoh? Uh, no. Uh, no. I don't think so. Um, I don't know 100%, but no. Look, they, they have obligations that they have to fulfill. So they have to make the DLC that they promised that they were going to make. It is likely that Creative Assembly feels very stupid right now because this is the first time that a Total War game has done this badly. That's actually a bad way of putting it. Uh, no, this is the worst Total War launch in the history of Total War. Like, you could even argue that Pharaoh's launch is worse than Rome 2's because at least people were playing Rome 2. You know, but you've got a game that isn't being reviewed well and isn't being played, isn't being bought and at the end of the day if creative assembly purchase uh, sells a game and it gets really bad reviews but it sells really well at, at least they're getting money and right now finances is the most important thing because they just lost a hundred million dollars on pharaoh uh hyenas i mean so what are they going to do in this situation you know judging from their past uh past experience their past behavior gives you an idea about their future behavior so with three kingdoms the dlc wasn't selling very well so they canned it um they threatened to can the dlc for total war warhammer but they're they're not going to do it if anything you guys if you're not interested in pharaoh and you're only interested in total war warhammer you should be glad that pharaoh didn't do well because it guarantees at least one year probably more of guaranteed DLC and support for Total War Warhammer because right now in terms of income coming into Creative Assembly Total War Warhammer is really the only game that's that's making sales because Pharaoh is not going to sell DLC the only way that they're going to sell more copies of Pharaoh is if they lower the price so they're going to have to do like a 50% off sale which they can't really do just yet they might do like a 25% off sale on Christmas um, but people are going to come to the game at 25% off, and they're probably not going to play for very long, and I don't think they're going to purchase a lot of DLC. It's just, it doesn't seem like something that's going to have much purchasing power. But they've got to do those those guaranteed DLC. They probably won't put that much effort into it. They're probably not going to put that many people onto the patches, so you'll probably get a couple of lukewarm pa patches over the next couple of months. And then once they've done their DLC, they will pack up and just move on to the next project. Now, the next project is likely to be announced at least in 2024, but it's probably going to be coming out in 2025. I really doubt that there will be a Total War launch in 2025. Um, because from what I've heard, the next Total War game that's being worked on is currently going through development hell. Um, which apparently just about every Total War game goes through development hell. Uh, development hell. Maybe 10% off for Christmas. Yeah, being generous, probably 10% off for Christmas. Which, I'm not buying it at that price, so whatever. So, you know, they'll, they'll keep players at around 1,000 for a little while, um, but it'll eventually trickle off to near nothing because it's a nothing Total War game. And again, it's nothing... It's not um, Sophia's fault for that. It's just a bad engine. 
bad bad engine, bad price, bad time period. It just has no elements of success. And and also in terms of how they manage the historical things, having immortal the Creative Assembly need to drop this whole um, legendary lord instead of uh, countries. You know, like if you're playing Rome three and you say I'm going to play as Julius Caesar and then I'm going to play as Virking Gatorix. No, 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 no. None of that bullshit. None of this immortal lords for historical Total War games. If you want to have Julius Caesar in the game, that's fine, but make him mortal. He comes, he goes, he dies, whatever. You know? Get this shit out of historical Total War games. One of the things that made historical Total Wars so good was having these characters that you had for a limited amount of time, that their traits and stuff developed depending on their actions, and then they got old, and then they died, and you cared about them. But when they're immortal, you don't fucking care, because they're just like a skill tree, just like put points into it, and they all become the same. So, I don't know, that was a bit of a long rant. <laughs> what are we talking about again? Am I ever going to play Malekith? Seems unlikely. I don't enjoy playing Malekith. So, I, I, I try to avoid the campaigns I don't enjoy. Uh, man, all of these settlements here are at risk of falling. We're getting some uh, some decent growth up in here, so that's good. Public order stabilized. We can upgrade Vulture Mountain, that one's fine. I have the Panther is iffy until I get rid of this. I don't know. Alright, check for new wars. All good, let's move on. But, you know, again, I, I want to state again, I, I kind of feel like I need to, because if I don't say this stuff, I'll be like, are oh, you just being negative? I am always rooting for a good Total War game. You know, if Creative Assembly in 2025 or whatever comes out with a good historical Total War game, that probably will be buggy on launch, and that's fine. But if they come up with a an ambitious game that has a large scope, oh no, I can manage that. I think. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, the AI does this sometimes. They will just besiege these kind of settlements, and they won't actually attack them. Weird. Yeah, sorry. If they make a good historical Total War game, I will always back it, a hundred percent. Regardless of how I feel about them personally. Instead of Pharaoh, they should have brought back Total Arena. Mm. I'm totally down for them to bring back Total War Arena. I don't think they will, though. Who sent this shit show in? What a disastrous campaign. <laughs> We need Rome 2 level stuff, but better than Rome 2. Mm. Looks like we're gonna have to abandon this area here. We just haven't recovered to be able to fight another green skin army. Oh, I got you, bitch. Oh, but I need to take out the other fucking Luther Harkon army. I wonder if I can take that out with just one. I doubt it, since they're just fresh recruits. Let me have a look. Boom, King of Mehikara. Don't be done. My dynasty reigns. Yeah, it seems unlikely, but let's just let's just see if we can auto this. Oh shit! Yeah, I don't care. Fuck him. That's fine. Because that means I can use the other army to get rid of those damn beastmen. Do you think a DLC Korea for Three Kingdoms would sell better than Pharaoh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so things to keep in mind about Pharaoh, right? That's that's a you're comparing a DLC to a, a main game, right? So. If we have a look at rough estimations for Total War Pharaoh, there has been between anywhere from 40,000 sales to 20,000 sales, roughly. Uh, maybe it's a bit higher than that, maybe it's lower, I don't know. 
Um, I doubt it's lower than 30,000, and I doubt it's higher than 50,000, but again, I don't know. So, 50,000 sales at an extremely high price is a fair bit of money. Is it enough to cover their budget for it? Probably, I don't know, probably not. A DLC for Three Kingdoms, essentially a dead game. Not, sorry, not a dead game, but a game that hasn't been supported. I shouldn't say dead game. Um, is it going to sell 50,000 copies? Because if you look at Three Kingdoms, let me have a look. Right now is not pe uh, peak time, it's past. Three Kingdoms has 2,600 players. Is, is it just me or is that low? I feel like it should have been higher than that. What's Rome 2 at at the moment? Wow, Rome 2 is way higher than Three Kingdoms. Oh, that's right. Three Kingdoms um, doesn't have the same peak time as as um, Rome 2, does it? Because people in Asia play Three Kingdoms more so than Europe. Right. It's, just, it's like that's its non-peak time. Sorry, not that one. Non-peak time compared to peak time. Did I even look at the right one? No, I did. Yeah, it's really hard to say if a Korea ki uh, DLC will sell better than, than a base game. I, I don't think so. Um, but it's also... I don't think that it would be particularly expensive for them to do that for, for Korea. But again, I just, I just don't know. Oh, I know what to do. I know what to do. We'll lose. Yeah! <laughs> it's like shit. Right? So you might be sitting there thinking, Why did you do that? Legend, you just lost for nothing. Okay, I had like nothing in there. This was a tier one settlement, right? But this guy is now stuck inside the settlement. And now we can do... Yeah, this, this fucking army here is isolated. Because <laughs> he moved forward. <laughs> See ya. Yes, that's right. Oh, I can have a big laugh. Oh, hang on. Bad Total War games? Yeah, I know. Me monitor all you like, but that's how it, organizing it that way works for me. Submit my will. Because otherwise we would have had to fought them both at the same time, and that wouldn't have been good for us. Alright, we're, we're only going to lose in the Hikara Warrior if I were to resolve it. I'm pretty tired, and we need to start wrapping things up, so... Bloop. And then we just get it straight back. Legend, you a oh, and also losing that unit is fine because I needed place in my army for this dude, which I should have put in my army before. Cool. Oh, that was a big blow to them. They've still got tic tac toe out there. Would have been good if he was here, I guess. All right, Ark and the Black's army is not as badly damaged as this one, so put him in there so he gets a replenishment. This over here, yeah, you won't be able to handle that, so he needs more time. If you want to give them al not give it to them, but... Alright, we've also got to do this. Oh, shit. Oh, for fuck's sake. The Beastman army is right here, but it's refusing to engage. Advance. Oh, that's bullshit. Mars. Literally, st oh look, look, I'm pushing the Beastman army around. Yeah, look, look, I'm pushing the fucking Beastman army around. It just, you can't, literally can't attack it. What if I go into Force March? Legions March. Yeah, they won't. 
Oh my god, that's so stupid. That the AI could just go into encamp stance and there's literally nothing you can do to pull them out of it. I deign to move. Make way. That's really dumb. Isn't there a special stance you could use? No, if they don't want to engage you, they, they don't have to. Now the thing is, if you're playing as Beastmen, you actually can't do that. Uh, Crushor did a 50 SEK super shit. I have an SFO disaster I'd like to send in. Since there was a SFO stream recently, is there a chance you would even look at it so it's modded? Send it in and I'll have a, I, I might have a look at it, maybe. Yeah, that's, um, that's annoying. Because I really wanted to get rid of them. Alright, look. We're at six hours into the stream. I really need to get off now. So, we'll call... We'll, we'll give somebody a, um, a raid. And we'll call it a day there. The campaign is no longer a disaster campaign. It's Everything's looking pretty... Pretty healthy. I mean, with the, this is Total War campaign, you're never really steamrolling because every time you encounter a new enemy, you have to declare war on them, and that means you just need a lot of armies. It just takes a long time. So let's see who we should chuck a host over to. Let's provide it over to Anton B Gaming. He's doing a Gormok the Dark Armorer. So this is probably a Darkland Orcs only. It must be a modded campaign. We'll chuck it over to Anton and go and show him oh. some support. And I will see you guys another time. Hope you've enjoyed this live stream. I certainly have. And yeah, once again, just really appreciate all the all the support from you guys recently. It's just it's been really great. Uh, how do I do this? Customize there it is. Oh, there he is. Alright guys, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you, and we'll see you next time. Later.